Thank you for being here. We really appreciate that you showed up tonight. We are Legends of Avantress, and we will see you in the mists. never much cared for bugs, insects, creepy crawlies, whatever you want to call them. Well, outside of making a handy snack for a vagrant on the go. When you were a frog, a shoe fly pie takes on a whole new meaning after all. But I have never once dined upon a centipede, and now y'all know why. And as awful as the trials and tribulations in the mines have been, there is a silver lining. Well, deep dark places of Folsons are absolutely crawling with millions of centipedes, they've lost their master. And so their purpose to spread the whatever curse and ailment that's infected the province for so long is gone. With the parasite dead, the healing process can finally begin. But it will all be for naught unless they can finally cut the head off this snake. Or pigeon. You stand in the very bowels of this mind. As you look around, those of you that are still conscious, you see the remnants of the hag before you, decaying at an, alarm, an alarmingly quick rate as you begin to see more and more pieces of Maggie McDuff exposed from within her innards. You see at first that she appears to not be breathing at all, but there is a very faint, very slow rise and fall to her chest. She's clearly alive, but barely. And as you scan the rest of the room, you see that the centipedes are still there, but they skitter this way and that, no longer controlled by the magics within this place. You scan the walls and you expect to see the mucousy membrane of them begin to turn to stone, but to your displeasure, they don't. Nothing changes besides the decaying of this body in front of you. Jericho lying on the ground, completely unconscious. Lethica on her knees, breathing heavily, still fighting back the throes of death that had recently overcome her. Briggsy, so close to death, that for a moment, it was as if death had overcome him. And it is quiet here, all but the skittering. What do you do? I will uh, rush to Maggie and see if I can uh, try to help her up. Um, I know she's unconscious, but I want to try to, to at least get her sitting up and out of muck and drag her from this this corpse uh, and, and maybe start to check her vitals and, and see what I can do. Sure, I will say that it's it's very easy for you to pull her up. You're incredibly strong. I won't make you roll for it. Um, it is disgusting wading through the um, quickly decaying flesh of this hag. Um, but you are able to, to make your way in through it and to essentially lift her out of it. I'll say you cradle her and walk her to the edge of the room and find a place to lean her up against. She's clearly not waking, even with all of the motion. Uh, her body is limp in your arms, so you have to lean her up against something to keep her upright. Her head lolls to the side, uh, her eyes closed, her breathing very, very shallow. As, as I'm resting her up against, I will put my hand uh, on her cheek and I will say, uh, I will whisper a soft prayer 
and say, please, Lathander, please heal her. And I will use uh, my ten remaining lay on hands pool to give her ten hit points. Okay. My hand will glow a, a gold light and, and try to give her some health. You watch as her cheek glows gold for a second with the light of Lathander as you grant her this healing boon from your god. And you see a small rush of pink come to her cheeks. Her eyes do not flutter open, but you see that her breathing is a little stronger, not by much, but still very shallow. She seems to still be very clearly wounded, but she is still firmly unconscious. Come tight, we will get you out of here soon. Is she dead? <clears throat> is she fucking dead? <clears throat> and you said there's still centipedes around? Yes. So I'm literally, while this is all happening, I'm just, I'm shooting these centipedes. <laughs> okay. I just, and, and I was probably not making a dent, but like literally, I'm just not gonna stop. I'm just gonna just start blasting them. I would drop down uh, where Jericho is and flop him over and, wake up, wake up, are you alive? You reach down and you flop Jericho over and the bits of him uh, clank against each other, almost echoing throughout the space. It's louder than you expected. And as his head falls over backwards or falls over um, to the side, his mouth opens and you see just a little bit of feather peeking out from the inside. As slowly his jaw begins to unhinge and from deep within his throat, you begin to watch as, as uh, Virgil claws his way out and perches on his jaw. Jericho, you find yourself in a world of darkness. Pure pitch black darkness and nothing but silence. And then the red, just on the outskirts of what feels like a large cavernous room, a red, deep red light, almost orangey red like flames as it begins to encroach on you slower and slower as shadows swirl around you and you feel a looming presence standing behind you you hear the ruffling of feathers you hear the movement of what sounds like garb clothing and the click 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 of is that a walking stick or a staff you hear a chuckle in the back of your mind. And you feel fear, true fear for the first time in a long time, a fear so primal and raw, it's almost all consuming. As a voice booms out in your head and you see this light that's emanating around the corners of your vision, the shadow of a large monstrous crow figure and you hear the words. <clears throat> you need me, Jericho. I am your only friend. I am your true friend. You will be mine, and your quest for a key is folly. We are meant to be together. I will help you, and you will help me. You would not want to betray a friend. Make your choices wisely. You know who is in control. He begins to laugh, and you feel that fear begin to ebb away. But it's still there at the back of your mind. Whatever this is, they know you. And as your eyes come to, you feel the light blind you. As you stare up into darkness, pure darkness, but it's, it's luminescent. And then it begins to, to clear. And you see that it is not a darkness, but the pitch black eyes of Farron looking down at you. She slaps at your face. As Virgil finally makes his way out of your mouth, spreads his wings and flaps a couple of times before resting on your chest, right over where your heart would be. Damned bird, you're right. Am I all right? Or am I? 
You are no longer unconscious. Oh. You're awake, staring up into Farron's face, Look at having me. just seen this vision, and you are dealing with five levels of exhaustion. Gorge. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah, anything. Did y'all get it up? No. Well, we're okay. Are you all right? Oh, gosh. And I'll, I'll sit up if I'm able to. Mm-hmm. What kind of support? Just take it easy. Just sit here for a minute. Don't get up too quick. I didn't kill everyone, did I? No. He didn't kill anyone. Let go, you're right. I am tired and hurt, but I am okay. Bang! <laughs> Come get the fuck out of here! Bang! <laughs> Bang! Uh, he's right, we, we, we have to move. Uh, the, the, the problem is we're, half of us can't walk and, and, and we're beat up pretty badly. And. I, I, I hate to even bring this up, but we have to find something to please the High Quisitor and make her think we're still on her side. I, I have to look for something to bring her. There must be something here that she was looking for. I'm gonna like scan the room and see if there's anything of note that would be weird or haggish. Uh, is is the, the hag's head still intact or is she like, did she just <clears throat> fucking like a, like a ripe watermelon? It was more like a ripe watermelon. Yeah, um, I will say that you notice that bits of the purple liver have almost crystallized, and you could find uh, a few of these crystallized pieces of the liver that you hope would be enough. Scoop them in a little bag, <laughs> cinch it up, stick it in my pocket. Oh, we need yep. some onions. <laughs> <laughs> we got stew going. Delicious. <laughs> Do you think that will satisfy her? I don't know. She she wouldn't even tell me what she was looking for. It just, I don't want to... We've made a grievous mistake, and I'm willing to take responsibility for it. You were right all along. Keziah Jenkins was not the one responsible for this. And, and we have... The matron here is proof. They were trying to help. I'm not sure how we're going to make up for this. And again, I'm willing to take responsibility. But we messed up badly. And, and, and for now, we need to make sure that the High Inquisitor still thinks that I'm in her pocket. And then we'll go from, from there, once we can figure out what to do. I mean, regardless, I mean... Look, I mean, she said it's in the mine. We can tell her what was in the mine, right? There's no reason to, to, to hide anything. No, but I'm just hoping that whatever we bring back, whether it be these pieces of crystallized liver or something else that she was looking for, it will be enough to satisfy her. We should see if we can wake the matron before we take her back into the town. Is she not dead? She seems to be breathing. She got fucking swallowed whole! I... The Thanda has helped me at least try to stabilize her the best I can. I didn't want to bother Lethica because she can barely stand herself. We need to get everyone out of here as quickly as possible. Wow. She's got to look on her side. The mine is proof. The High Inquisitor can, can come here and see all this. I don't disagree with you, but she specifically asked me to retrieve something, but wouldn't tell me what it was. Does uh, Maggie have uh, like the extra arm growing out of her back still? No, that okay. appears to have faded. Mm, okay. All of your... Uh, Issues. I mean, you guys obviously had the liver, Trump but um, <clears throat> yeah, it looks like with the with the hag dead, uh, that whatever magics were overtaking everything seemed to have begun to fade. Which is why at this point, it's it's strange that the mines themselves still retain the fleshy walls and have not returned to what you would imagine was their original uh, visage, which would have been stone. With the scene of. 20 riderless horses coming back to town. I don't think the High Inquisitor is going to come to the mine herself. Also valid point. Well, here's the thing. If we need more evidence, you can always grab the severed head of old Captain Marky Horse out there. I'd rather not stride into town holding the decapitated horse, mutant head of their previous captain. Also, it sounds to me like the High Inquisitor was 
looking for something specific. If we aren't sure that we have it, as much as I want to leave, does it make sense for us to search the area a bit longer and see if we can find what what she would come here for if she were here now? I'm certainly not going to risk our lives. If we can get the matron out and you can walk and we can carry Jericho out of here as well, we can look as we walk, but we should not delay. If, if someone will just stabilize me, I can walk. Here, take some of this. And I'll pour him some tea and um, cast cure wounds. No. Oh. Well, fair enough. I, I am my mask. I'm mighty grateful that uh, we ain't fused at the hip and the elbow and the shoulder and the, the clavicle no more. But I feel about as useful as rusted farm equipment. I can barely move my jaw. Jogren, do you think you can carry him out? I think you're gonna have to. Yes. I'll carry the matron. Keep her stable. I'll take him. I'll grab uh, Jericho by like one arm and drape him over my shoulder like a like a wolf's pelt. Okay. <laughs> I you don't need to roll for it. He's yeah. light enough like, and head very on weak. One side, clank, legs clank, on your <laughs> He's a wedge between your neck and your tombstone, but it's it's a good place for him. I don't want to weigh you he seems down, stable. Jorgrim. I feel so <laughs> bad that I almost killed all y'all and did what I did. I'm just mighty grateful y'all still alive. I think that once we get out of this mine, you can just leave me in, in an old wheat field or a pumpkin patch or turnip patch or any why, patch. Why would we do that, Jericho? Cause I'm more trouble. I'm more trouble. I don't got no friends but a weird gross crow. I... First off, that thing is not your friend. I think we have some things to discuss, but we're not abandoning you. Well, if you if, if care, Drew, I wouldn't blame you. We won't abandon you. Do you have any hard limits as far as like like a rutabaga patch, for instance. I don't know any any, any vegetable patch. I, that'd be that'd be just fine. What about me. field? It's not growing vegetables, but like more like a patch. Well, I suppose if cropless field is what I deserve. I too am fortunate that we survived. We can we have a chance now to correct the mistakes of what what we have done and 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 what we have learned tonight. But we are not leaving you anywhere, Jericho. You are with us now. I will scoop up the matron Maggie McDuff, uh, and, and again just whisper a small prayer. It's please, the Thanda has your right hand. See us through. Uh, and then uh, try to look for a way out. Whether that just be the way we came in or... It looks like the only way out is the way that you came in. Mm, brutal. That's not pleasant. <laughs> All right, he's going first. Can we even get back up? It was awfully slimy. <laughs> Slick. How are you feeling? You don't look very good. Lubricated. Ew. You, <laughs> what? I, we, while I appreciate your colorful use of language, you're one of the only one that has their hands free. You're going to have to lead the way and protect us just in case. Oh, I got me cutlass. Fine, and it just disappears. <laughs> 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 Gun in my belt and I'll, uh... <sighs> For those that are carrying people, you would need, uh, this is so gross, uh, two of you are going to have to hold the sphincter open to allow your entrance into it now. <laughs> So I think that's going to be <laughs> Farron and... I look to uh, Farron oh. and I look at, and I look at Briggsy. <laughs> are we doing this? <laughs> Oh, I feel so used. You can just leave me in a patch of beans. <laughs> After everything that we have been through today, you're going to hesitate now. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. He goes nothing. <laughs> Thank you. And All I right. begin to walk through the sphincter. And I need you to make a strength saving throw to see how well you hold the sphincter open. It's, oh, it's quick. It's quick. Oh, Keep just, in mind just, you uh, moved your hands. Just the, <laughs> just the two of them. They're the ones holding it. Strength. Mm -hmm. I'm not but strong I at all. Because if you remember how you Seven. got in here, it was essentially contracting and pushing you through. Six. So it's a tight sphincter. Really... Birth out. 
Yeah. You've seen Ace Ventura. Some of us are too weak. Yeah. Some actually, of us are too weak to do that. The Lego scene. <laughs> I hate all of us. Got us oh, that was a saving throw. Okay, so I'm I'm instantly crushed and killed by the swing there. Yeah. What? Uh, did, so what did you guys get? I got a seven. Okay. Six. Oh, yeah. You're struggling, but it is it's very tight, and especially now without having the hag controlling the way this works, you are having a hard time finding anywhere to put your hands to to grab hold of it to hold it open, and you can't seem to you can't seem to even open it. Like an anus portcullis. I'm gonna start taking my. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna start taking my staff and try to like wedge this anus. Open. Okay, so I would say roll at advantage. <laughs> You're right, it's just fucking flesh, right? I'm gonna summon the cutlass and I'm gonna, I'm 17. Gonna start to try to like hack it apart. So you're gonna wait until Farron does what she okay. does. You got a 17. I got a 17. You are wow. able to find a uh a hard portion of flesh deep within the uh, the very center of this that you're able to wedge your staff against and pry it open, giving Briggsy enough room to get his hands in and to help you hold this open. So I would say with that, you're able to get it open. Oh gosh. If was... Briggsy decides to start hacking at it, that will change. What if I like gently like prime rib style? <laughs> <laughs> I would say this is this is this is very it's not it's not like it's only an inch wide hole that you're going through. There is a long like tube, a can colon. We just, can we just yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> We're not talking about this. Yeah, yeah. There has never been a time. Farron's <laughs> Farron, wedged up against a polyp. Oh, oh my god. Well, no, I was, I was I was worried I'd have to explode the sphincter. <laughs> we all just get through. Come oh, on. I, I will push through. I'll be, I'll be with behind. with Farron's yeah. staff in the sphincter. You're able to. Wish we had oil of slippery notes. <laughs> <laughs> I always wish that. <laughs> uh, but you are able to make it through the sphincter as you climb up the uh, as you climb up the long, uh, fleshy shaft. You eventually find your way to the other side and you spill out into the room. Uh, the, this room is one you're familiar with. Um, the walls are still covered in flesh, but it's quieter here, and there are significantly less centipedes. Are the corpses still there? Yes. The leftovers and... <laughs> that's further down. That's past the ear room and the... Oh, yeah, right. um, yeah, the yeah. foot room. Oh, the yeah. earwax room. We have yeah. Go. I mean, I'm not going to make you go through them again gauntlet style. You'll easily be able to, but I'll say for, for the sake of it, uh, when you do pass things that you had slain in this place, you see that their their corpses are still there and they are unchanged. They are uh, still the fleshy abominations they had been. So what I'd like to do is just find my grossest bag and like cut off an ear and cut off a nose and when we get to the corpses of the things we killed, like take a few random body parts to show like the, the abject horror that was this place. Look at this sack of things I have that I certainly did not do myself. I'm not showing up at the collection because I'm a murderer. We found them like this, I swear. There's a bunch of noses and ears all over the place. We're gonna be arrested and killed. Yeah, instantly. We're gonna be burned at the stake. We're not even gonna be arrested. Yeah, we're just on site. Yeah. You'll never fucking believe this. Uh, I will say roll a, roll a dexterity check to see how well you do cutting off the bits and pieces. Oh boy. This, Dan? Is, this is not your night so far. You're going to end up with like ground, a bag of yeah. ground <laughs> yeah, so, so you watch as, as you make your way through the mines. Uh, Briggsy occasionally stops here and there to cut bits and pieces off. Um, he is not focusing on recognizable areas of the body. It's just large chunks of flesh and a mass together in the bottom of his sack. It's hard to tell what this is. It looks more like a flesh stew than anything else. What are you doing? <laughs> you are really disgusting. You know what I'm doing. <laughs> what what the the <laughs> this is going to be valuable for our... For, for, um, we, when we get questioned when we get back, I'm going to have this disgusting sack of flesh to be like, look at how gross this was. Like, instead of one? cutting off fingers, he just severs the flesh of the palm and puts it in, Ew. that kind of thing. Well, Isn't delightful. this exactly why we took the liver gems? Well, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm still hoping that we find something uh, more 
uh, perhaps like the the research or, 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 or a diary or something, but I mean, there's no there's no work space here. There's no collection of, of, of things. There's no hag stuff. I, I don't know what we're looking for. I, I don't hate your idea, but do you think that maybe you could be a little bit more surgical in your collection? Oh, have you done this before? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Would you like to do it? Maybe I carved a turkey, boy. It's not that hard. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I carved the flesh right off the palm. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> 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 Well, what, what if we just take back one of them weird, gross tentacle masks? I don't think that's a bad idea either. But oh, the baby with the, all them spider legs. <laughs> I, that's where I'm drawing a line. That's a hard no, Jericho. We don't need to scare the townspeople. For all well, I care, if she wants to come back here and get what she wants, she can do it herself. We've been in here long enough. I, I understand. I just... Fine. The other thing we need to discuss, and I'm just saying this as we're walking... Yeah. We, we cannot take the matron back to town. We have to make sure she gets somewhere safe. It'll only be a matter of time before she's rounded up and, and inquisited like Keziah, and then subsequently burned. Well, Keziah Jenkins hatched not too far. It's just right past the mine entrance. Maybe we take her back there and put her up and make sure she's okay and only leave her in the woods alone. Should we see if we can revive her here? Do we? I at least like to get out of the mind do you, first. Do you think she has her own hood? Hard to say. We can ask her when she wakes. Can we leave before we attempt to clear the water? Uh, the, the waterways. Can, are we near so the waterways? I would say you you've passed that by now, and you saw that the the centipedes had started to. They had been in the water. And it was very clear that the underground uh, waters, the subterranean rivers, uh, were spreading the centipedes and the um, and the infestation across the entire land of Folsons. As you looked down into the chasm, going over it to leave, you could see that the centipedes were making their way out of the waters. And it is very clear, I would say to you, that though nothing is fixed immediately that over time these centipedes are no longer controlled that magic that um that the hag had had is not in effect anymore that that sickness will or that uh infestation isn't going to spread whether that means that people who are sick already will be cured you don't know that yet mm. Good. interesting so it's not like she necessarily created a ton of centipedes it's more like she called them and yeah. channeled them and you obviously, Slippery Oswald is a different scenario, but yeah, she was utilizing the centipedes to spread the infestation and the sickness across the land. What'd you say? Oh. Very accurate. Um, well, may maybe we did do a bit of good here in, in these horrible, horrible mines. Wasn't that there's a huge chasm that we had to get over? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. just for the sake okay. of brevity, yeah. you were God. able to get over it. I think I did enough. I think I did enough with the sphincter <laughs> that we can. The rest we can see. I do not. Thank you, out. benevolent I, I fall to my death. Yeah. Yeah. Lavica falls a thousand feet. Yeah, all of the gauntlets that you had to do to get in, we're not going to do to get out. I appreciate nice. that. Nice. Do we think anybody knows about Jenkins' hut? It's hard to say. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, if they know where it is, uh, then maybe we, maybe it's not safe. Oh, do we do we tell them where where it was and say, oh, we we're gonna expose these horrible witches who are actually real good witches <laughs> trying to help you, folk? Um, I don't think that's wise. They're not going to believe us. No, no, I'm saying we already did it. We already said, hey, here's a good witch. You're trying to help you. You should probably burn her. I misunderstood what <laughs> we you We found said. her out in this clearing right uh, over there. Did, yeah. we, did, we, did we tell the I folk? think we did. I, I, didn't, I don't know if we told them where we found her. I think you told think them that the hut them. was behind the mine and that you were oh, drawn, yeah, we you were drawn there by a light. And so I would say... It's not like you gave them a map, but you gave them a rough idea of where her. And then it's her not safe be. to take her there. Let's just get out, see what we can do about reviving her and making sure that she's safe. And we'll 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 talk to her and we'll explain the the mistake. 
like I said, I'm willing to take full responsibility for not listening to Farron. We appreciate that. Sorry we got your friend executed. Burn it to stake. An apology is a first step. Ooh. Oh god. Just get out we, of here. Find somewhere to hide her. We, we could not have known. We were doing what we were told, and unfortunately, we were being manipulated. We, all, the best we can do is try to make up for it. That's it. We will try to set things right. Not repeat our mistakes. On our way out, I want to make sure that we get a mask and, you know, just sort of Yoink. one of everything. Yep. Yoink. I will say you can do that. Whatever you say you took, when you get back, you could have taken. I Easy have peasy. That says, yes, they definitely killed the hack. <laughs> and it's valid. Well, One dead head. <laughs> stamp, stamp. Who notarized this? Oh. I'm actually getting really nervous that you're being so nice to us now. <laughs> what does that mean for later? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Y'all should just start calling me the Cabbage Patch Kid, because you can just leave me in a Cabbage Patch. <laughs> in case you see one on the way back. I don't really understand what that means, but we're not leaving you anywhere. It's also a long word name. I would never call you that. <laughs> oh, gosh. I guess that's true. Jericho is a little bit easier than that. You're just tired. Cabbage Patch Kid always one extra syllable. <laughs> you are simply tired. That it's making you sad, cranky. Just well, I'm wait until you sad. rest and you will feel better. <laughs> and it is about this time that you see the entrance to the cave. You have made your way out of the very bowels of this place. And though it is still the perpetual darkness that this land resides in 100% of the time, it feels it feels like morning. You can see the, the faint glow of the sun on the horizon, the sun that never quite peaks up over, but makes that beautiful pink in a line at the edge of the world. So it's early dusk. It's early dusk. Uh, what is our urgency to get back right away? There is none. Just for our own to recover and rest. If we were to take a day at the cabin together, the risk of being found out would be reduced. We would be able to rest. It is a shorter trip there than it is to the city. We would be able to protect Maggie should someone come to the hut in that rare instance. And I am very, very tired. I think that's a fantastic idea. I don't imagine that they'll be sending anyone looking for us, uh, especially after what happened. No one even really knows we're out here, except for the High Inquisitor. If we take an extra day and get back to her, we can tell her that it just took us that long, that our experience was well, whatever we want to make up. I just thought I might suggest the idea. And I would say she didn't give you a time limit, so it's not like she was expecting you back in one day. You would imagine if you needed to take a couple of days before you got back to the city, that wouldn't seem suspicious to her. I think that's a fantastic idea. Uh, DM, uh, what Jericho? A... <laughs> Good question, try... Jericho. What does Maggie McDuff look like again? A and B. What is she wearing? Was she wearing like? What was she wearing when she came in? I think she was like Miss Purple. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean that that's very similar. I would say so think, looks like think of Hermione, like Saturn, or no, um, think of Professor Trelawney, but with red hair instead of blonde okay. hair. So oh. it's like I'm getting like a Mrs. Freckles, vibe. like a frizzy, it's yeah. like curly, big red hair. Magical um, Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just long it's and down, long. It's not tied but up. Um, but less of a drunk. But less of a drunk. My coworker said I looked like her once. Oh, <laughs> that's a sweet thing to say. Because my hair is real frizzy. Yeah. Um, Come on, you kids, let's go into this fish's egg sack. Uh, she's uh, got freckles on her face. Um, she yeah, she is just Lily Tomlin. Yeah, Lily right, Tomlin, right, right, absolutely Lily Tomlin. great, great. Yes, Lily Tomlin's great. So I guess um, what I'm asking is, we and saw her in her like matron outfit. outfit. Yes, yeah, so what she was wearing now is more what you would expect a woman in the woods. She was okay. wearing a um, natural colored, what looks like a dress. Um, she had a cloak on. She had she has bags um, all around her. She has um, what appears to be a book or a journal, uh, leather strapped to her side. She has a few vials here and there. Um, she looks like 
exactly what you would expect to see a um, fantasy adventurer alchemist oh, out in the woods picking uh, herbs so for really a poultice. Her outfit is Kaziah <laughs> Jenkins-esque. Yes. Okay. Uh, Talk oh, about a big old serving of humble pie. <laughs> 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 it's a little sour. You get an extra wide slice. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, am I full. <laughs> So yes, uh, does that answer your question? Does that help? Yes, yeah, 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 thank you. It's, it's been a while. No, it's fine. It's I don't think I ever solid. really described her outside of like she shoots in and fireballs. Yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah. I wasn't sure if I just missed it. Then we are in agreement. We go to the hut, we rest, eat. I can find us some food. That would be good. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. We leave the mine. You begin to make your way well, we towards. Collapse it so no one else can go in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? No, I don't. You <laughs> make your way towards where you remember the hut of Kaziah Jenkins to be, and in doing so, you pass the now um, smoldering pile of the bodies of the knights that you had burned, and you are able to see the rough formation of their forms. And it is both sickening and comforting to see that their forms have not changed back to the nights that they had been. That even with the death of the hag, what had happened to them was irreversible. There's nothing that could have been done about it. And that you gave them the best send off that they could have hoped for in that situation. Yeah? Something about the sight or the smell or the the view of this trickle something in the back of my brain and as i'm looking uh with the gang uh we pause for a moment before moving on to the hut i (sighs) gasp for a moment and then surprised at myself in confusion say nothing but continue would i have noticed that I don't know. Make a perception check. I... <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, roll an insight against your deception. And I'm at disadvantage because I mm-hmm. have man double nines. That's exciting. Are you? Oh. I, there's no need to throw it. Tell us I how you really listen. feel. <laughs> All right. Mace really yeah. didn't want to be here today. He uh, sent me a text yeah. message and was I'm like, "Do question. I have to show up? Because I'm not really interested in playing tonight." <sighs> Eloise sucks. I want to be there. Am I needed, or would this be a good one for me to just play league? Yeah. Uh, I get cool. cool. Yeah. Can so I just play league tonight? You perhaps yeah. you're standing right next to me, and I, I, I was shocked. I by assume it. I would have been kind of helping you along because you were. Yeah, because you're at half speed. Carried, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm moving real slow. I'm, I'm holding like my bruised ribs and, and just moving very slowly from the, the amount of exertion that I've underwent. Um, not just from the battle itself, but. Like I'm dying. So yes, you would notice that. And you had a question? If I may. Are you masked? I put the mask back on as soon as the fight was over. I crawled And you over finished kissing Marius. We, we, no, we embraced. You we embraced. We, we embraced. <laughs> we embraced, but we, there was no lip there was on, no on skin no. contact or I lip on pure lip. harsh. I'm the DM, <laughs> I'm and my voice. head cannon says you kiss. <laughs> I am pure of loins. Thank you for saving my life. <laughs> That's how that works. Oh, I'm the DM, and they could have drawn that scene on the cover of Elamore. <laughs> You're such a lame boy. You really did. Uh, no, it was a thank you hug, you know. Yeah, we embraced. It was a I'm glad you're alive hug. But you saw her face. I did. I would imagine. Was it fucked up? <laughs> I can't tell you that. It's like Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> I can't, I don't, hey, look, I don't kiss and tell. Hey. Yeah. So you admit that you kiss. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty Just funny. Say, got him. Just to say, got him. Got him. Motor vote for one each of <laughs> Negative or positive? <laughs> <laughs> and who? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the motorboat of life. Well, yeah. he's a dampier, so you take one HP and he gains an HP. Oh. Oh. Like a little bite play, you know? 
Uh, as as we're, we're we walking <laughs> walking towards the direction of I guess where we think I guess where we know because I Jenkins hut is I'll be like uh, wedged between the tombstone and and uh, Yorgrim's shoulder and I'll say, well, when you get a chance, Yorgrim, you may want to perhaps take this old rock off and, and get a massage. You're you're a little tense. <laughs> you're kind of cr- crushing my rib cage. It's more of just a cage for a terrible demon. <laughs> With your musculature, which is very impressive, but I think that you may need to, to get a little TLC. I don't take the doom off. Oh. It stays on my back. I suppose, I guess, suppose the, this entire time I've known you, I've not seen you with it off. Doesn't it get a little burdensome? It's far lighter than the weight of my sins. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the end. <laughs> well, I, 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 don't, I don't think a massage is going to take care of that. I, just trying to help. No, it's been, it's been a tough night. Do you think uh, you always bring a lighter mood with your jokes and your tunes? Do you think you could hum our way as we walk back to the hut? Ooh. I would appreciate it. Uh, uh, hum, uh, hum, a hum? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know any humming tunes. Uh, uh, what kind of tune? I need, I need a request. Do the one from that movie with the fox guy who stole from the rich people and gave to the poor people. Like, <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> 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 and I just hum the rest of it. Why do I suddenly see a bunch of dancing hamsters? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. I dig you hey, the, kids. I dig you the I love hamster dance. Thank you very much. Of, of horsey boys, and I want to find one that's like relatively, like where the head's still relatively, in, like not super, no. like burnt away, and like put it in my bag. It would not fit in your bag. Oh, what are oh. you doing? <laughs> Put that down. Leave him be. Why? We need evidence. We don't need evidence of that. Look, when you go, when their you... families are there. You're going to bring that back to their families. Well, maybe they would appreciate it. I doubt that they would. Look, all I'm saying is that when you go on a quest for somebody and you're going back to get a reward, you got to really sell how fucking awful this was. <laughs> That's the best evidence we fucking got about how fucking awful this was. We took the mask. You have the bag of palms. Oh, it was really <laughs> tough. There were masks. Oh, no. But then we can say, oh, my God. They fused your god, Captain, with a fucking horse. <laughs> Oi, and then we killed them ah! all. <laughs> what are they going to say to that? You have a bag. You have a sack filled with noses, ears, and palms you skinned off of <laughs> horrible monsters. That's yeah, but I don't think that you're coming off the way need. that you think you're coming off. I mean, here's your thing, though. I think I see a toe. On second fall, it just sort of looks like a meat <laughs> stew. I'm not sure how much this is going to sell. Ooh, maybe. But one of these, even just a skull, I mean, it's not natural. It's clearly done with some foul, dark magic. Who are we trying to sell this story to? I thought we were just oh, getting... Inquisitor! Ed- Look at how fucking horrible this experience was. A, we're very capable and we can handle this. And B, we went through a lot, so, you know. <laughs> you know. Briggsy. We, we deserve something for experience! Briggsy. I'm never going to forget this. Briggsy. Yes. Take a moment. One. I believe that the High Inquisitor knows much more than she's letting on. This is not a matter of convincing her. She was looking for something specific here, right? And what do we get, what do you get if we give it something specific? I don't know. All I know is for now, I want her to think that I'm on her side, that I'm playing her game, all right? All right. We'll get you payment. Oh, we'll get you what you want. It's more about being compensated for this traumatic experience. Please do not bring the god captain's mutated head back to the city. That's all I ask. <laughs> I don't think it's the god captain, to be fair. I think it was one of those other guys, but all right. Throw it back from the pub. Thank you for being reasonable. D- do you feel better after my humming? I think your grim quite cares for it. Yeah, it's nice. 
Okay, well, I cast Mass Healing Word with that. So, everyone... <laughs> <laughs> All right. so everyone will get a nice little bit of health. Ooh, that's not too How bad. How many people can it hit? Uh, six. Oh. So all of us. Uh, eight. Two, three, but eight. not Maggie oh. McDuff. But not Maggie McDuff. Are you I'm, t- I'm actually at full health. I'm at full health, Well, good. Too. Then Maggie can have it. No, yeah, Maggie can have a little bit. Okay, I actually tell have me more how much. hit points than eight. my health. Eight. Eight. It kills her. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, I'm not full. She <laughs> heals so much she goes around the bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Gandhi and civilization, where all of a sudden his piece of pacifism <laughs> <That's laughs> was 10, and then yeah. an underflow, actually, apparently. Oh. <laughs> underflow. <laughs> I think you made that up. <laughs> Check out the Wikipedia page. I don't want to. I'm not interested. I love it when you guys fight because I know you're going to kiss and make up when it's over. <laughs> I'm going to kiss, man. Marius is a virgin. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, so is Filled with doubt. For, for <laughs> 300 plus years. Totally a virgin. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I've been busy, man. I've been busy. Yeah, I've been busy, man. i got a gun. Uh, I'd like to arrive at the hut. I don't know. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I we just left Andy's the body of blushing. corpses. <laughs> we left the body of horse corpses. Yeah. Right, and you were through. having an interaction, yeah. so oh, I was going to give you the right. opportunity right. to have that interaction. Uh, yeah. A lot is so, going to happen there. Huh? Yeah, we. This would have been a side that. before any of. Uh, the that conversation happened, yeah. with Briggsy, but you would have heard me gasp and take a uh, what is very clearly a sorrowful uh, intake of air. We are right. Do you need to stop? Yes, I I think I am fine. I was overtaken for a moment by something. I just need a moment to get my wits about me. I don't, uh, this is not uh, very usual. (laughs) Excuse me. I, um, uh, uh, just uh, uh, something about uh, this tableau. Uh, It struck me as very sad. But uh, I, I'm, I'm okay to walk. Let us, please, let, thank you for your... Are you sure? Thank you for asking. Just no, lean I'm, on me. I'm, I'm here next to you. I will when I know what I, what I am feeling. That is fine. Thank you. I'll just continue kind of supporting. You know. uh, I'll, I'll walk along with you in silence, just sort of uh, <clears throat> uh, contemplating until we start to... Experience with Briggsy. Briggsy. <laughs> and the, the experience with Briggsy will happen. Sorry. Oh, I was going to call no, yeah, don't, go go for it. Uh, don't you don't you oh. dare. <laughs> Haven't you said enough Garth, already? Uh Miss Lethica, I have I have a question. I start to walk sideways so you can oh. get his head towards him. <laughs> yes. What's a tableau? Uh like a uh, like a scene or a uh, uh, a vignette. Oh. I'll make I'll I'll write that down as soon as I have use of my hands again. And with that, the scene with Briggsy ensues, and you're healed with the humming tunes of Jericho as he completely forgets that he even cares what a tableau is, for the moment at least. (laughs) As you quick, as you, uh, you rally yourselves together, still clearly overcome by the situation that you've endured inside of this mine. Uh, But you get yourselves together, you convince Briggsy not to take one of the skulls, and you begin trekking through the woods. And you do eventually come to the clearing where Keziah Jenkins' hut had been, and still is. You walk slowly, concerned for the magical plants that had accosted you the first time you set foot here. And though you see their forms, they seem to be completely unmoving. No magic reaching their roots, no magic controlling them. And you are unhindered as you make your way towards the hut. It's cold, there's no fire beneath the cauldron. It is clear that no one has been here since the last time Keziah Jenkins had been here, since the time that you overtook her and brought her back to Cyril. There's a small bed in the corner with uh, what looks to be a handmade quilt. Uh, I would say it's easy enough for you to place Maggie McDuff beneath the beneath the blankets and begin to warm her up. You could light a fire under the cauldron. Uh, really do whatever you need to. This house is yours for the time being. All of her magic biz went poop, right? Because I Jenkins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It like exploded. Yeah. Did yeah. The cauldron. The cauldron had like a carving of like a goat skull, didn't it? <gasps> that was a. There was diff- a. The symbol. Print? There was a symbol on the inside of it. Yeah, and it was, the uh, I would say you're familiar and mm, 
Yeah, it's a symbol that you have seen before. Is it still there? Wait, I I, I thought know. sorry, I thought it was a different cauldron because I thought creepy bag hands man like slooped the, the cauldron up. It, there was a skull in Ooh. the bottom of it. And oh, he took the skull. Oh, just the skull. It was a goat skull. He took the skull. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. I knew he took something. There was a skull, but there's also the symbol of the cut, wasn't there? Carved in or maybe I don't know. It's been a while. It's been a bit. Let me consult my notes. I didn't write it. I should have written it written it down. <laughs> Uh, hmm. anyway, I will sort of, uh, I want to kind of, like, just do a quick perimeter check to see if, like, I think that anyone, is it, or unless it's very obvious no one's been here. It's very obvious okay. no one has been here. I think I'm going to go out and try to hunt us up some food. All right. I, you just uh, drop me in the corner. I reach out, uh, and... Uh, though I have very li little energy left, I will um, uh, uh, he, uh, be led through the darkness, and uh, you will feel the blessing of my goddess uh, uh, overcome you, and you will have advantage on stealth uh, checks uh, for nice. the next hour. Nice. Wow. Well, thank you. But to put it to good use, I'll be back soon. And then, so I would like you to roll a stealth at advantage, and then I would also like you to roll a survival check to see uh, how well you are able to hunt and procure food. Oh boy. Well, there she goes. I gave you advantage, and you're still going to be like... <laughs> um, I got a seven on my stealth, okay. and you said survival. Let's try this one, which means it's also going to be low. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, it's not bad. Uh, Ooh, plus eight. Ooh, 20. Okay. Not bad. So I'm loud as fuck Noted. When I'm so we'll talk, we'll resolve <laughs> oh, that fun. at a later date. What Where? are the rest of you doing? Do you think the goat's going to head her up if she's out there alone? The, the, the what? The giant goat that we saw in the woods? There is that creature out there. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm sure she'll be fine. Oh, yeah. I'm sure she'll be fine. She lives in the woods, and she's suited for this. Well, have I some, should... have some faith, I Briggsy. Mean, well, I, I said she'll probably be fine. <laughs> I know. I think that's exactly right. I am confident that Farron will be back with a kill as surely as night will fall. Especially in this place, it's double shoe. So, what are the rest of you doing? Well, I guess I'm still, I'm, I'm doing whatever Jorgen says I'm doing. <laughs> we're, we're RPing. <laughs> we have to RP this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, we're just kind of like sitting around. I mean, I would have said, you know, we lighting a fire for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just keeping an eye on, on the matron. I would probably um, just be conversing, right? Like waiting for Farron, making sure that she's going to be okay, listening. I wouldn't be doing anything really specific other than hunkering down and, and, and resting and waiting to see if, if Maggie stirs. Okay. Brizzy, right. you, you got some sticky fingers. Why don't you go rummage through uh, What's-Her-Face's back and see if there are any clues? <laughs> McDuff. The yeah. Oh, he's, he's your pack. Uh, he's I mean, like a bunch of bags. She's literally <laughs> covered in things. She has, she has too many bags. She's got three <laughs> Indiana Jones size satchels all on her. <laughs> Um, uh, if you insist, I mean, I suppose I could. And then I'm gonna, oh yeah, I'll just start rummaging through all of her possessions. Don't steal anything, please. I want to make a note of any jewelry she has. Uh, <laughs> just any, any just gold, a note. Any gold teeth. <laughs> just so a, I'm, 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 I'm noting the crying her mouth teeth. open. Uh, and I just want to check her belongings. <laughs> Look at all these gold teeth. <laughs> I can't believe how many there are. How can I hold Roll an investment. Investigation I check. Not uh, <laughs> God, you're the worst. <laughs> From your loving husband, inscribed inside. Oh no, she's a matron. Oh no, wait. Does uh, matron mean not married? Just means. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Authoritatively does... feminine, right? Yeah. Well, you have a mate. Oh no, matron no, means mother, married. Right? And then there would be patron. Matrimony, right? There's the matriarch of the family. Mm hmm. Oh, that's and a, ma a, a matron. matron of honor is the married yes. woman who is the maid of honor. Yeah, that's what you I got a what? Seventeen. 
Uh, you begin to look through her pack, and what you find is most of them seem to fe- be filled with um, uh, vegetation of some kind, whether it's uh, root vegetables, different types of much- mushrooms, uh, sprigs of plants and things of that nature. There are vials of things. None seem to uh, pique your interest. You do see that she has a wooden, a wooden ring on one of her fingers. Um, and it seems to be carved in a language that you don't Ooh. quite understand, almost like a runic script. Um, and you see what you also find that she has uh, bits of parchment with scribbles and drawings on them. Think of the Voynich, Voynich manuscript, mm. if you've seen that, nice. um, where it's all kinds of strange botanical images oh. of plants that you've mm. never seen before in a language that doesn't make any sense. Classic. Huh? Uh, you, oh, cool. Yeah, it's it's so cool, isn't it? It's the back so cool. rooms. Oh no! Um, <laughs> you, um, you also find one vial of what appears to be a um, like a. It could potentially be drinkable. It could be a. Um, just chill out, all right? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a thickness that looks like it could be consumed, but it also looks like it could be put on wounds. And it glows with that same green um, luminance that the mushrooms that you had found glowed with, the uh, ones that Farron had found on the windowsills, etc. It looks, and it does have a more magical property. It looks like this is something that might be some kind of medicinal uh, vial. And lastly, at the very bottom of one of her bags, you find a wooden, um, a wooden, almost like a chip, but it's shaped like this, almost like a triangle, but with rounded, with rounded edges. Mm. In the very center, there's a hole where there's nothing there. And etched into the, um, all around it is that same script you remember seeing in Keziah Jenkins' oh. journal. It looks like a plan chat, but it's clearly not a plan chat. Oh, uh, shit, really? I really thought it was a plan You really you thought you don't really know. I know. I thought I fucking figured it out. You know what I thought it was? I thought it was one of those those uh, three-color highlighters that you would, like, pull off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go make coffee. No, but actually, I'm going to make coffee. Coffee. Yes, yeah, so you, you notice that okay. she has a wooden ring on, and she, at the bottom of her pack, she had this uh, wooden... Trinket. Well, I found these two wooden things. You took her ring off of her finger? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, In fact, I did. It seems important, though, because they got the same kind of script on them both. I can't read it, though. Can anybody else read this shit? Briggsy, is that a ring? Yeah. Where did you find it? On her person. Where on her person? You Wait, can ring. clearly see where, like, <laughs> There is no sun here, but she's got a moon tan. <laughs> and there is clearly a very white patch on her uh, ring finger. But where else would you find a ring? Mary is on her finger. <laughs> Mary is. <laughs> Please put the ring back on the matron's finger. What, what, it might be a clue. We can take a look, but after that we do, and, and, and we see what script may be on the ring surface, then you will return it, Bastion. I, I, you know better than that. What, you think I'm going to steal? It's made of wood. This is worthless. This is less than worthless. Do, do I need to put out, uh, point out the uh, moral quandary with which that you are not wanting to steal it because of what it's made of and not because stealing is wrong? What if it's a powerful magical artifact? It might be actually very... I mean, put it back. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody figure out what it says. I'll, I'll take a, I'll <laughs> take a look. <laughs> what languages do you speak? For the ring? Uh, I'll take a look at the ring and the trinket to see if I can decipher it. So any. the trinket is clearly that same script that you saw in Keziah Jenkins, the same runic script that you saw in Keziah Jenkins' journal. That's which you still haven't cracked. I still feel don't like speak that. tensions um, are a little high. But the ring, however, is in a different language. So what languages do you speak? Common, deep speech, elvish. Okay. Speak primordial. That's really... I, I speak common. I speak draconic. Ooh. Me too! Also dwarvish. I don't know why. It's an elvish. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, I can read it too. <laughs> uh, you, <laughs> the the writing on the ring, um, it goes around the, act, the inside of the ring, not the outside. And it just says, my love for you is eternal, like moonlight. I recognize the language. It's elvish. 
Oh, it's on the inside of the oh, ring. Okay. This isn't the. This is not the. It's some the beer. kind of selfish. No. Um, <laughs> I, I, I convey the translation that I read in Elvish on the inside of the ring. This is probably very mean, meaningful for her. We should return it. Oh, so not any kind of like mystical, magical, powerful artifact. Did I, get I would a say feeling? you could tell immediately that there is no magic infused in this. It's simply a wooden ring. If there is magic in this ring, it is not imbued with it. It may be a focus of some kind. But then, as you put it by the fire, you see that. (laughs) Keep it secret. Keep it safe. (laughs) Where are those fucking eagles? (laughs) Solve this problem right away! Um, uh, I give the ring man and the trinket back to Briggsy, and what I'm doing with the time that Farron is hunting is uh, seeing what accommodations this hut could have in the form of sleeping arrangements. So I'm looking for blankets to lay out, if there are any uh, additional beds. It really just trying to clear space so that six bodies can lay down and slumber at the point when we grow tired. I'm thinking mostly right. about myself. So it's clearly a one-room hut. Yeah. Um, there's nothing more to it than that. Um, there is the one bed there is I will say the equivalent of a, a log couch a couple of chairs uh, you are able to find what looks to be like a, a linen closet or basically an, a catch-all closet which okay. has pots and pans some seasonings some herbs some dried herbs um, but also has some um, uh, the equivalent of what you would be a towel or you know, things for Any cleaning yourself off, as well as by. a hand. I would say there are three bed rolls mm-hmm. um, and uh, some linens and a few more quilts. Okay. Stuff down at the bottom. I, I, I start pulling that out and trying I would say to There's enough out. for you to make reasonable accommodations for everyone. It's not going to be comfortable for everyone. Okay. Um, but I notice one's ring play and I take out the steam cleaner and I really quickly take care of it. Perfect, yeah. Um, it's abyssal. Oh, yeah. Abyssal. Get it? <laughs> Put <up>. Inspiration. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Tootie Doo. Thank you for the follow, Tootie Doo. Tootie Doo. Tootie Doo. Tootie Doo. Um, and that's what I'm doing with my time. I'm, and I'm whistling as I work. Uh, just sort of. And I'm just uh, going How do you out my whistle day. with that mask on? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Did your mask have a mouth hole? No. Mm-hmm. That would be gross. But but I, <laughs> I, 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 will say, I didn't think about the through the, <laughs> through, through, through the powerful magic that is my god and how I achieved this mask. I do not I do not sound muffled. I can breathe. I only need to lift it in order to eat and, and drink. No, sir, and um, you mind passing the mask with you? <laughs> it's a nice key on tea. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! I'm sorry. I asked. <laughs> Love the suit. <laughs> he has a no, doesn't have a mouth hole. Where? <laughs> what, what is that weird triangle looking thing that looks like a planchette? <laughs> or is it planche? And it is about this time that Farron will arrive. What you had been doing, Farron, is you'd been wandering through the woods. Uh, hoping to be cloaked in shadow, but unfortunately you were not, as you are, uh, this is not the kind of terrain that you're familiar with. You stepped on far too many twigs, you stumbled a few times, tripped over some- I say that I smell like I've been in an anus cave. For and a day. you smell like you've been in an a anus, anus cave. A there were a couple of times that you saw these large juicy boars that you tried to sneak up on and make your prey, but they were, re- even these boars were repulsed by your smell as they ran off into the thicket. But what you were able to, to do was draw the attention of a pack of wolves. Oh, good. A ravenous pack of wolves. Great. Love that. And you were, with your uh, survival skill being a 20, you were able to outsmart them. Your The loudness of your nature roll and your stink attracted them. You were able to outsmart them. You were able to fell the largest of them, the alpha. And with oh. the alpha killed, the others scattered. Uh, you are relatively unharmed. I'll say you take, uh, you take four points of damage. 
Not bad. Um, as one of them is able to uh, to chomp into your leg a bit. But you make your way back to the clearing with, um, and I would say while you were out there, you skinned it, uh, threw away the things that you didn't need, and you're able to make your way back to the hut with a sack full of fresh wolf meat and a large pelt. Nice. You killed Jacob, you fuck. (laughs) You're not supposed to tell her this is a Twilight allegory. (laughs) You know, new moon, eclipse, (laughs) Twilight. This is clearly my Twilight fan fiction. Uh, I'm ready for it. Let's go. Um, I sparkle. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you do. 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 You you haven't been in sunlight yet, so they don't know that. It's just moonlight, that's right. I I don't know. That's my hidden past. We need a muse to play in the background during a baseball game. That's true. Well, you can just put me me down over there, you agree? I feel like I'm still just kind of... You you can put him down in one of the chairs, and you just... Put him next to the really weird CGI baby. (laughs) Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Put him down next to the CGI baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, pick me up! Pick me up! Pick me up! Pick me up. <laughs> well, I, I feel like tensions are a little high on account of that horrible, uh, traumatic experience in the butthole mines. Would anyone care for a joke to lighten the mood? As it's he's just talking, one I, part of a I cross his left leg over his right and fold his arms so he's sitting like. Sitting nicely. Yeah, that's hilarious. Oh, I feel so dignified. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look dignified? Here, why no. don't you here? Why don't you put my hat in my hand so it looks like it's a it's a, a balmy day? <laughs> I take his hat and I put it in his hands. It's like he looks like stuffing him in the face. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, oh, it's in between the two. Like, <laughs> Well, this is very. This is some Jorgen related humor. Uh, so, so why did the frog show up to the grave with a shovel? I'm gonna like this one. He wanted to rob it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the grave robbing him. I don't know why it was a frog. For some reason, a frog was on the grave. <laughs> At least it was connected to green. <laughs> <It's not laughs> <red. laughs> oh, he's green. I mean, he's oh, he's big green. Huh. That was actually very good. Lighten the mood. As you all stare at Jericho in disbelief, you see the shadow of Lethica or of uh, Farron in the doorway with the pelt on his back. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll walk in and have a pelt, and it's scraped, but still kind of bloody and disgusting. But I've got it on like a. Like I'm flying high, <laughs> and I'll I'll drop the big you know sack of meat and stuff. I've got dinner. Well done. Did you kill a whole pack of wolves. <laughs> Just the one really big one. It's impressive. Thank you for doing that. Just go and kill the wolves without the group. Gro- that's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> do I look dang fair? Do I look dignified to you? Oh, I suppose so. Oh, good, because I can't move. <laughs> so you said, no, you don't. I'd be quite quite sore about it. Well, uh, you just go on there sitting, and uh, I'll get the food rigged up on the fire. Someone will have to feed me. <laughs> I'm You're not feeding him. <laughs> well, I just I'll like to feel included. <laughs> there is some the seasoning in the pantry. And I, I will say it's it's easy enough for you to get. Um, you're you're able to make a nice hearty meal. Uh, you find that there are some um, there are some root vegetables that are in the bottom of the the pantry area, and you're able to make up a nice hearty dinner. You find uh, there's a small garden out towards the back, and you're able to find some carrots and other things that you're able to cut up, and you you make a nice. Uh, comfortable dinner, probably the best dinner that you've, well, now the Mirabelle's made a pretty good dinner. But outside of that, the best dinner you've had in a while. Um, and you are also, <laughs> they did have cookies. Uh, you're, this fucking Panera. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're also able to, uh, I will say, dry some of the meat, but you have a significant, significant portion. So you're essentially able to turn some of this into jerky uh, to distribute nice. between the rest of you so that you have some for, you know, <clears throat> worst case scenarios. Hell yeah. 
I'm surprised myself with utility. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, did you see that weird old goat out there? You didn't. Oh, we didn't. Maybe he lost interest and went away. Well, <laughs> might be my smell keeping him off. I, I don't smell anything. Well, I can smell you <laughs> and the rest of you. Oh, if we well, could get we, cleaned up before we get back to town. Are we, they might not welcome us. Are we nose hole blind? What? <laughs> like well, nose hole know. blind? You know when you smell a smell for so long, you get you get used to it. Oh, yes. From your nose hole. Well, I don't got a nose. I got a nose hole beneath my filthy sack of a head. <laughs> and can you smell with it? Or is it just for show? <laughs> no, no. I can. I I do have all of them, the senses. Oh. On account of the. Dark demonic magic, I suppose Virgil senses, or maybe that's what it is. <clears throat> Anyways, we found some wooded things. Want to take a look, Fair? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> On account yeah. of you being connected to the wounds. <laughs> Here. Sure. We found this. How's the matron? Oh, fuck balls. Is she awake yet? Uh, no, not yet. She's got a wound. Oh, fuck balls, she said. She's got a <laughs> Seems a good sign. <laughs> I just spilled my fucking coffee all over my book. <laughs> Said the matron. <laughs> <laughs> but also, this coffee is probably going to be disgusting. I thought I put 12 cups of coffee in there, so I did six spoonfuls of coffee, but it only filled up to eight. So oh. Very powerful. No, that's going to be, gonna like be even better. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw you walk in with 10 cups of water. I'm like, oh, you're going a little late because it's later in the evening. I, I thought that I was... I don't know, that I wasn't was... deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> Good old cup of mud. So I'll, I'll take the. Yeah. Uh, I assume you put her ring back on. Yeah, there, I, put her, so. I put her ring back on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do I recognize the triangular item? Uh, I would say you don't recognize the item itself, but you immediately recognize that the script is the exact same because you you you're the one that's found this journal. Um, and this could was, I read the journal before? You couldn't. This was... Um, mm. this, Common Druidic and Sylvan? Yep, you couldn't read it before. It's in a strange runic language. It seems to be something that was created. Uh, code language, specifically for the purposes of you don't know. Um, but you can see that this is very much the same as Keziah Jenkins' journal. It does seem to match, but... I don't know. I mean, could you look for clues compared to your journal or not your journal? Because I, I guess it's your journal now. What did I do? I have the journal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I do. Tiny I person. Guess. Um. Yeah. So I'll sit down on the floor and you know pick my tooth with a wolf bone and um, <clears throat> I want to just look and kind of like see if there's anything on the pages where like that would look like it lined up or um see if there was something that it made sense to like use this thing in. One Roll of the an arcana check for me, please. Yeah. Do the symbols matchy matchy. Arcana. Eighteen. Ooh. Oh, nice. I that was a ninety-one. Um, you <laughs> almost, almost. As everyone is enjoying their food, there is light conversation. The candles have been lit. The smell in the hut is comfortable and cozy, and it's almost easy to forget what had happened over the past twenty-four hours or so. As you relax into the comfort of your friends in this cozy place, and you, uh, you get yourself set up in one of the one of the chairs, and it's a nice wooden structured chair with plush uh, seating and a little lap pillow. You place the journal out in front of you, and as you you eat and you look through it, looking back between this small wooden uh, trinket and the book. <clears throat> you notice that some of the symbols seem to be similar and you're looking through, you don't find any spot to put it. But as you move it over and you look through the hole, as it passes over the runes, it's almost as if they begin to magically translate Holy into shit. words that you can read. Whoa. And you sh are shocked for a second as you move it away and you see it's just simple runes there on the page. But then as you put it back over, you can read it. Then you can't, and then you can. You begin to look through it and you notice that here and there, there are little magical bits of dust you hadn't noticed before all about this room. And your attention is drawn toward a cupboard that when you don't have this up to your eye does not exist to the naked eye. What? <clears throat> so with this, you've now found a cupboard and you'll be able to read the book. Um, you look 
I will say you are easily able to get up and rummage through the cupboard. And you all watch as Farron quickly jumps up and runs to the side of this house and she opens a door that had not been there. And as it opens, you all are able to see it. And inside of it, you see, I would say about 10 vials of the same medicinal mushroom paste that you had found on Maggie McDuff. Holy moly. Um, and when you close the door to your to all of your eyes, it disappears. Wow. But to you, Farron, as long as you have this disc up to your eye, you can see it. This is incredible. I can see, it's like a whole nother world of, of things you can't see with the naked eye. Look through it. And it's it's not as if there is no space there. It's just to you, it looks like that's a spot on the wall where no cabinet had been built. The space is there. You just can't see that it's there. Wow. It's almost as if it's shrouded by magic. Uh, this, is, this is very clever. <clears throat> so, well, what's, what's in it? Is it like this thing? And I pull out the, the, the vial that I had, had found on Maggie. Yeah, it seems to be the same. Well, what's so special about it if you're trying to keep it hidden? Can you tell what it is? Can I tell what it is? Can you tell what what is? What's in the vial and in, in the um, I will say, well, it depends on if you want to read the book. Yeah. Ooh. Yes, so I, I you'll essentially tell the group you need some time with the book and I will go through what you find. Okay. Um, what you begin to learn as you read through the pages of the book is that full sense, this specific province has been corrupted for decades, um, but it has been getting worse over the years and that Kazaya firmly believes that something must be done to save the children. Um, although the Archbishop and the Church of the Blinding Light and the head priests are in the respective province towns stress following the one true path and piety and the worship of Foltis to save the pro province, this has been done for generations and nothing has fixed it. And so clearly, following the one true path is not the way to solving the problem. Uh, clearly, the faith doesn't work here in this land. Uh, it's filled with darkness and magic, and that she believes that the old magics, the magics of the woods, the power of nature, the secrets of alchemy, is the only hope as far as she is concerned. Though she's afraid to be an open practitioner, she practices in secret, and through long seeking and subtle searching, she's found two sisters in arms, who have reverence for the old ways, Maggie McDuff and Zephyrine Mirabel. With the power of three and the power of feminine, they exponentially increase their power. They have found through their workings that digging deep into the earth, they have revealed these mushrooms that have appropriate, appropriate alchemy and magic that can actually treat and even cure the curable curses of Mother Midnight and her forces. Um, Basically, this mushroom showcases, um, or sorry, uh, the book itself showcases different uh, recipes and alchemical symbols and runes and how they've trialed and erred for years working with these mushrooms to try and find a cure for this um, and how to produce it. Uh, Macduff has come the closest out of all three of them and how to mass produce it. Um, and at her hut, she has everything that she needs to be able to make this in bulk. She's the one that lives closest to the specific mine where they are able to safely procure the mushrooms um, <clears throat> and that she has sent over uh, a large uh, crate to Mirabelle, or to Zephyrine and to uh, Kaziah so that they have some of the, some of the uh, elixir on hand. Um, Do we get the sense that that's what we found? I would say okay. we've come very clear to you that these vials that are specifically different than the ones you'd originally found, which were clearly their tests. Okay. The ones that you'd found where some of them were smashed up and cut mm. into pieces and things, that's when they were testing the mushrooms. Um, but this is clearly the, the cure. Um, and what you see towards the end are more hurried scrawlings, um, a lot more fear, uh, a lot more uh, paranoia. Um, that she notices lots of centipedes crawling about her hut in the woods lately. Um, it gives her a bad feeling. Um, she believes she caught a glimpse of one with a terrible human looking face, but she hopes that it was just a trick of the light. And she will say that her husband has fallen ill and she fears that she cannot save him as the cure has not fully reached its potency. But whispers have already begun about her and she fears both she and her husband are doomed. And she wonders what that means for her and her coven. I'm 
gosh. Well, um... <clears throat> that's too bad. Anyway, we should get some sleep. Too bad. I take my hat off and I put it on Jericho's head. I take my jacket off and hang it on his shoulder. She was one of the few uh, people that actually could have helped solve this. She's dead now. Um, it is because of us. We were hasty to receive our rewards. We were blinded. <laughs> I agree. We, we didn't have much to go off of, and we were hasty. You were right. The only way forward, I think, is when the matron comes around and come clean about everything. We discuss with her. We beg for her forgiveness. But this also means that we have an ally in the Miravilles. Which we thought we did before, but we weren't sure. Now we know. And maybe, maybe there's, there's someone, an apprentice. Someone they've been training, someone they've been passing their knowledge to that could fill that third spot. Certainly this isn't going to make up for the death of their friend. But the fight is not over. What if Seferine had the... the... What am I thinking? What is this called? Mushroom goo? Mm -hmm. Paste. If Seferine had the paste, why isn't anyone getting better? Why isn't she using it? So as <clears throat> she had mentioned that even when her husband was sick, they hadn't fully, it hadn't fully reached its potency. Okay. So you, I would say just because you found the mushrooms on the outside of the windows, she had what she had. And so how do I put it this way? It has to essentially f ferment for a certain period of time. Um, and that's why it's in the glass jar. So they sent it over, but it hadn't reached its potency to be able to actually cure the sickness. So um, Zephyrine had them, but she couldn't feed it to Colette because it wasn't, it wouldn't cure it yet. So she, you know, maybe just a mother's hope was like, maybe if I have it around the house and I put it by her window, it will lessen it, it will make it better. It is now to a point where those vials have reached their potency. Maggie McDuff has figured out how to, has finally figured out how to accelerate the process and mass produce it and make it readily available. But it's taken years and years of them working with this mushroom to finally get to this point. We'll, we'll talk to the matron and, and we can come clean to Zephyrine as well. But we can, we can urge them and convince them that we're on their side. And, and try to make up for this, this, this horrible wrong the best that we can. The book references that the power increased exponentially <clears throat> and they were combined in three. Do you think that her death at the hands of the bishop, bringing them to two, caused the change in the moon, caused everything else? Do you think we led to some shattering of their protection? It's possible. Oh no! I, mean, I, I don't. I don't mean to raise any alarm bells on account of us not being able to do nothing about it, and on account of I, me not being able to move, and let the guy having just died, uh, and Briggsy being covered in goop. Anyways, didn't that terrible old, what was her name, Stroganoff? Sonoga Black. Sonoga. Didn't old centipede. Hag say that what the witch in the city was in danger or something? Right. And if one hag is not alive, the other one is, I would point right there. I'm pointing with my eyes. Does that, I guess that kind of narrows it down, doesn't it? Wait. What are you getting at, boy? You're talking in circles. Is that if someone's in grievous danger and she's perhaps in nearly dead, wouldn't that mean that Zephyrine is nearly dead? I didn't think that she was talking about them. Well, she said that one of the good witches in the city is um, currently in danger. Ignore the comment. <laughs> it's been a long time since you've played. Wait, yeah. I mean, she's what the, the sister of the Archbishop. He's not going to let anything happen to her. Well, I suppose. Perhaps she was just all bluster and taunting us with information she didn't have. <coughs> and I would say you're not sure how much of what a hag says you can trust. Injection. 
was maybe she wanted us to go away and to leave her alone so that we could go save Zephyrine because she needed it quickly. And we'll meet with her and we'll make sure that she's safe. It may have been a feint to distract us and mm. make us weaker during battle. I think she did a pretty good job on her own as it was. <laughs> <laughs> she was quite the customer. <laughs> I was really questioning Lord Philip's uh, judgment. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I should also tell you before we sleep. First, I would say that journal is, in my opinion, the property of Maggie now. It is uh, of her cousin, and I would propose that we return it to her now that we have learned what we need to learn. I can go along with that. Yeah. I have to say, I'm, I'm interested to talk to her to learn more about the mushrooms. I have many questions. But I want to share this with you now before we have an audience. And before we move on. I did move on for a brief moment during that fight. It move on from what? I passed through the second veil. The what? I died. Oh. 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 So I mean you I mean with with the way that they were off screaming. Yeah, oh, that's what I assumed, but okay. It is I not often you. that I am knocked out of a battle in that way and you saw it on the train, I was made unconscious, but this time I passed through some threshold and I found myself in a starry sky. Brilli brilliant points of light danced all around me. It felt as though I were in the cosmos that we stare up at every night. Ooh. It's pleasant. And for a brief moment I felt alone, but a voice, a voice whispered to me and I could see a, a bright, shining light. It turned out to be the moon. We like a good moon. That is not the afterlife I picture for myself, Jericho. Oh, I'm sorry. If I should see a moon in my final time through that veil, I would be very disappointed, upset. This was not right. The voice spoke to me, it said, you do not know what you have done. And I was able to return. I think in part because of what you did, Nerys. I, I know you were right, right there above me when I came back. But I also had to be willing it was a choice of sorts. Do, do you believe that I did something wrong? Did I? No, 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 not, not. No, I, I. Just that there was something else on the other side, and that it spoke to me. I, I do not know what it means. It is a mystery to me. But I, I felt it important to share because we are. Kin, we are on the same quest now together, and I want you to at least, should you hear anything or, or, Shar forbid, be confronted with the same voice, be perhaps better equipped. Are you, are you sure you died? Just 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 linger on the brink of unconsciousness. Some hallucination. Some fevered dream. In my heart of hearts, I know it was no dream or illusion or hallucination. When it happens, and I hope for all of us a very long time before it comes, it is a different feeling. I cannot seem to shake. I cannot. Perhaps I'm just tired, but I feel stretched out. Well, <clears throat> we should probably keep some of that liver around then, eh? Just in case. 
I mean, it's changed since we consumed it. It's not fresh. I was going to say fleshy, but yes, it's not fresh. It's, it's as if it's crystallized. You don't think that us eating our liver is changing us insides and out, losing our own free will to become unwitting puppets of a terrible gross witch or hag? Well, that's what Pop- was happening to us before we ate the liver. Oh, we don't feel different now. Turning and morphing into hideous abominations. We, we, our backs were against the wall. We had no choice. Well, I, I don't feel like now's the appropriate time to sing the supper song I had come up with. <laughs> If there's, if, if there's the anything else, I mean, we could attempt to make a long rest. I don't know if we oh, want to do watch. Oh, sorry, but if we say that again, because I didn't want to turn it off. Oh, no, I did turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lethica. Yes. I am sorry, whatever you experienced, you were... It does not sound like you were with your god at that time. No, I, uh... I'm afraid not. I hope... That Jericho is not onto something, and that we are not. that we didn't make an incorrect choice by consuming the liver. I haven't lost my powers, and I do believe that my god is still with me, and I believe that yours is with you too. Thank you. I believe that through my very be- be- being, yes, I uh, would agree. I, I plan to pray. I. What uh, time is it? It's probably about midday, midday at this point. I am tired and I, I wish to rest, but uh, perhaps I will say a few prayers before night. All right, well, we should get you rest. I'll take first watch. Happy to stay up for a while. And... I feel like a pirate. Is your good luck. Yo ho! <laughs> I'm trying to not make light of the very grim situation that we found ourselves in. I even quashed my supper song. No, you can still sing a supper song. I would enjoy a nice, light-hearted, jaunty tune, as they say. I'm, I'm feeling awful sad, but I guess I always am. Anyway, I don't can't play my banjo. It's over there in the corner. So it's got to be a cappella. <laughs> Sorry if you don't care for that. <laughs> it's dun dun, dun dun, dun 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 dun. Ah, ooh, it's wolf for supper. <laughs> ah, ooh, dun 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 dun. I go on for too much at it. <laughs> it's like, I, I finish my wolf for supper as I'm listening to this very strange tune. I mean, you're just stating what we're having for supper. Uh, you're right, it's not a very good tune. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just a little tired. I, I, I think, I think, uh, ripping, let, letting, letting, a, I mean, Virgil out was, uh, it took, it took a bit out of me. Maybe my mind's not right. Maybe it's not mine or even the hags. Maybe it's Virgil. Well, you are just stating what we ate for supper. You also howled in kind of a sing-songy way. <laughs> so, I mean, that yeah, was Yeah, Virgil would of, never do that. You're right. I feel very good. Thank you. Thank you, Yorgo. It's kind of creative, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Yorgo. That makes me feel a lot better about the whole situation. I couldn't have come up with it. And with that, yeah, we, you no, all we, fine. You finish your supper. You have some more chit chat. You keep the fire under the cauldron going, and there's a fireplace, so a hearth. So you keep. You have a roaring fire in the hearth. You're all warm and cozy, and with a nice herbal tea created for you by Farron, you find your allotted places somewhere in the house, and you cozy up, and you you all find yourselves 
unconscious. So before we sleep, we beat no. uh, Jericho to death like Johnny Five in short sleep. Oh, two. then yes. <laughs> and, and then we go to bed. Perfect. And amidst, and amidst the rusted remains of what once was Jericho, you all find a peaceful sleep. <laughs> Poor Johnny Five. He can't, he can't move. Get him. <laughs> but no, you, you are all able to find a peaceful sleep. And you all dream. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Wait, 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 wait. It is darkness that you find yourselves in. Pure, complete darkness. You can hear the sounds of the forest around you, almost as if you were still inside of the house that you had fallen asleep in. But you can see nothing. You cannot feel the warmth of the fire. It is just pure, complete darkness. And then a pinprick of light far off in the distance. And it feels like you, this is a dream state. You know this is a dream state, right? This is, this isn't real. This is clearly a dream, but you can feel every minute of sleep pass. And it's nothing but darkness and that tiny pinprick of light. And an hour passes and the light gets just a little bit bigger. And then another hour passes and the light gets a little bit bigger. And then another hour, and another hour, until finally, you feel 10 hours have passed of sleep. As that light is now a luminescent milk white orb in front of you, and it spins and spins and spins in the darkness, and then begins to take the, fa the shape of a face as the hag moon looks down at you and with a wicked smile, you watch as its lips tilt up and it exposes its, its moon-like teeth. As it looks to you and says, it's time to wake up. And you feel yourself jolt awake, all of you immediately at the same time. <gasps> you are rested. You've gotten a long rest. But in that dream, you felt every single second pass as though it were real time, as you watched the moon make its way closer and closer and closer to you. Yeah, that's a nightmare. That was torture. That was a, a, a sleepy, I would have said waking nightmare, but I guess I was sleeping. It was just, it was, it was, it was a nightmare. <laughs> Period. Jericho, you expect yourself to feel significantly more exhausted than you do. All of your level of levels of exhaustion have reset, and you feel you feel achy, and you feel tired, and you feel sick to your stomach a little, but you are no longer exhausted. Oh, gosh, I shouldn't have had. Uh, Lethica, same for you. An extra helping a wolf me doesn't agree with the, the hellish energy. Too much stroke. I guess a bissel. <laughs> oh, perhaps. Uh, and Lethica, what I will say is upon waking up, you don't know that anyone else has experienced the same dream. The voice that you heard from the moon was the exact same one you heard upon death. Did anyone else get a wake-up call from uh, the, the, the creepy moon lady? Oh, yeah. Yes. This, this is bad. This, whatever they are, these hags, this, this coven of witches, they have access to our minds. This is not good. Slowly torturing us. That was the voice. What? That was the voice I spoke to you about uh, just as we finished dinner last night or earlier today, where whatever time it is. Uh, I would say you slept through and is now early early dusk the next day. Okay. So it's essentially the morning the next day. It was, like early dawn. You, you, it was a long okay. sleep. Just after we ate yesterday, when I shared <clears> my experience. That was the voice. It certainly lends credence to Jericho's theory. Perhaps okay. eating the liver had something to do with it. So when you fucking die, the hag in the moon talk to you? She must have great dominion over this place to be able to intercept a soul on its way to its rightful place. I've known many to pass beyond the veil. I've never known one to come back once death has claimed her prey. 
I look over and get a status update on where Maggie is. Is she breathing still? Is she... She's still breathing. It's it's less shallow than it had been before, but she's still clearly unconscious. Okay. I, I, I return looking back at the group, nodding. Should we try to wake her up? She's oh, in here all I would say... Um, I don't know who to make the intelligence check, so I'm just going to say, you remember that as her eyes fluttered closed, that they glowed with that same lilac color. You imagine that because she was consumed by the hag, she's probably undergoing some of the same afflictions that Colette mm. and the other people were. You could try one of the um, one of the the potions that the DM has handed to you. I think I've given you 11 at this point. Yep. You could try one of those on her and see if that... No, no. Are. There was even a book that oh, talked that about how like you could fix it. But I'm just out. saying, like, I think Why after a night of a sleeping <laughs> and clarity, you <laughs> might think, huh, nothing else has worked. This could work. I think. Right. But but it's up to you. I no need to RP that this. We dump out the paste in the backyard. Uh, <laughs> I was going to suggest we take Maggie directly to the authorities and turn her over to the high inquisitor. No. <laughs> She's clearly a witch. The journal and clearly that is where we will end the session. And the campaign. And the campaign. We should use our means to wake her up. Oh, I've been so stupid. <laughs> wake up! <laughs> you shake her, her head lulls from side to side. Her One of her eyes opens just slightly, just from the force, and you see that there is that purple lilac glow before it snaps shut. Or not snaps shut, but <laughs> closes. <laughs> well, I feel like a new scarecrow. Anyone else feel? Oh, I'm so, she's not doing so well, but I'm... It's just, I should not have said that. Is there anything we can do to aid her? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I a smart one? <laughs> because uh, because, because that's what my character would do. I do. We all have the same knowledge. Well, I suppose, I guess <laughs> mushroom, mushrooms are now my thing. <laughs> you want my crow, my gross crow? There you You're know. like Mrs. Dash with all the shit you have. <laughs> Sprinkle like some shit on her. her. <laughs> Give her a little emerald. Bam! <laughs> Come on! I think Get your head out of your deer ass! <laughs> <laughs> The antlers would be very painful, I gotta say. You're making me break like seven of my eight tenants here! Yeah. <laughs> Who are you gonna fuck now, Marius? Yes. It's the eighth tenant, just in case you're wondering. Christ! Fucking. I mean, Lathanda! <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, fancy Lathanda! <laughs> Marius, hold her still for a bit. All right. Tells her head back. Back, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the force of that is so strong. You, you, oh, yeah. you hear the bone snap in her, in her neck as her head falls limp to the Let side. She's pencil. clearly oh, no, dead. One. I'm no doctor, but she has osteoporosis. <laughs> <laughs> Had osteoporosis. <laughs> 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 um, I'll, I'll flick the cork off of one of these vials and kind of coax the th disgusting thick now, you, you have to rub at her neck a little bit to get it to go down um, but you're able to you're able to administer an entire vial of this uh, mushroom uh, poultice or um, goop, goop. Um, this no. mushroom uh, yeah this mushroom potion we'll say um, and you immediately begin to see color start returning to her cheeks and her chest rise and fall a little bit more. And you watch and you wait. She doesn't seem to wake. You wait two minutes, five minutes. And it's about 15 minutes into the consumption of this poultice. Between 15 minutes to 45 minutes as uh, directed on the back of the Advil bottle, um, that it seems to start taking full effect. Uh, and you see her eyes slowly flutter open and a soft groan uh, emanates from her mouth as she um, she attempts to adjust to the light that is filling up this space. She pulls the blankets tighter up around her. She groans a little bit. And you can see she's falling in and out of consciousness, but she is clearly slowly waking up. It's working. And as you see her eyes flutter open, you see that the lilac color is slowly fading. It's now very, very pale. Um, within 
15 more minutes, it's completely gone. A step back. Do not crowd her. We do not want her to feel threatened. Right. That's right. You see me like getting ready to my banjo. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wait outside and give in just so you know. I leave. <laughs> oh, you're right. You should probably leave. You, you know, she doesn't want to see any monsters. You're... She's met you. I mean, I, what is Still, you I mean, look at it. Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> the joke! It'll be dope on all of it. Do you have any jewelry on you? Virgil, Virgil, get out of here, too. You're not welcome here. I feel like he's ruffled me. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie, can you hear us? Uh, she, she groans a little and her eye is fully open and she looks around at all of you. Where am I? What happened? You're you're in Kazaya's hut. We're and you see, as you say the name, you immediately see a look of sorrow flash across her face for a second, and then she nods as she. Uh, you see her her hands have the the quilt pulled up around her, and you see as her fingers slowly, kind of. Um, touch and caress the blanket and there's a there's a longing and a sadness there i i am so sorry for your loss i take full responsibility for what happened now is not the time to be talking about things like this what's done is done we've got to fix this you are safe we've got to get to the antidote to all the children to everyone affected by the sickness has that hag been killed did we do what we needed to do she has been oh thank gods thank the gods large part to you. Thank you. I wish I could have done more. I was blinded by my rage. What she did to the children. It's, it's horrible. I'll never be able to forgive myself for it. Do, do, you, know, do you know what happened? If, if it's not impolite to ask? Do I know what happened inside of that abominable mine? No, at, at the orphanage. How did, you, how did you make it out? You see her her lips quiver a little bit as she chokes back her words. She, she starts to speak but stops as the mere attempt to say anything makes her well up in sorrow. And she takes a moment to choke, uh, choke the pain back down. I'm not quite sure what happened exactly, but I know that I was taking out the, the nightly refuse, the, the children, they... They don't eat much, but they sure do make a mess with what they did what they did eat. And every night I would take the scraps outside to a compost heap. It's a great way to, to feed the crops. We had a garden. We had a, a garden for, for the children. And uh, it was part of their their daily routine to make sure that they watered the plants and to pick the ripe veggies and we would use them for food. And so I would take the refuse outside and turn it into compost anyway. Um, I digress and I step outside and the entire place alights. And I attempted to get in, but there was some strange magical seal on the doors and I couldn't I couldn't get in and I could hear them screaming. And I knew, I knew it was them. I knew it was because I knew Kaziah Jenkins was not, she wasn't the cause of all of this. There's something foul and sinister in the underbelly of that city. And we, we hadn't yet had time to weasel it out. We were trying so hard to cure the children. We, we should have spent more time trying to figure out who's at the bottom of it. And I knew I couldn't save them when I couldn't get in, so I ran. I ran into the woods and I ran back to my house. But something didn't sit right with me. And so I I scried. I'm not sure if you know what that is. I have my little and she reaches into her pocket looking for her little stone. It's gone. It's my 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 witch's stone is gone. We we have it. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. We and she she reaches out and takes it. And she's like, "This is more magic in it than you'd know." And I used it to look on the town. And I uh, I hope you don't mind, but I was eavesdropping on you. I had to know whether you were whether you're good or whether you're part of their plan. I hope you found that we're good. And I began to put things together. And when I found you were going into the mines and I saw what you did for those poor knights, I knew. I knew I had to help you. We had to figure out what's going on. And I couldn't let my grief over Kazai and over those children, I couldn't let it overshadow what needed to be done. 
and I met you there to help you. And I, I wasn't much help, but I was some. And now what I can do is I can expedite the, the creation of this healing, this healing, this potion, and we can, we can save those who are left. But I need you, I need you to do what I cannot do, and what the coven can't do. I need you to get this information to Zephyrine. I need you to let her know what, what, what transpired here and what needs to be done. We have to work together. And Farron, maybe you you could be our third. You're, you're a woman of the forest. You, you could help embolden us, empower us, if you'd like. I don't know. If not, I'm sure we can find someone else. We're much weaker without Kaziah, but but we can still do what needs to be done to save the people of Folsons. We... But I need you to protect me, and I need you to... I need you to make sure they don't catch scent of my trail or find my house. We are in your debt, and we will do anything that you ask. And you of us. see that she is she's clearly almost in a state of panic, and she's too weak to sit up, but she keeps trying to and, and falling back down, and she keeps catching her breath, her eyes roll in her head occasionally as she is too ill to be this worked up, but she is in a frenzy as she thinks of everything that needs to be done. I'm gonna have to go into the mines and I'm gonna have to find even more crates of those mushrooms, and I have enough herbs and, and I'm sure I've got enough magic left in these hands. I'm I'm not too old for this yet. And she's um, almost talking to herself as she's going through a list of all of the things that need to be done. Um, and then she quickly turns and looks to all of you. But I can handle all of that. I need you, with, with my orphanage gone, there's no need of me back in Cyril. I need you to lie for me. Tell them I'm dead. And, uh, and she looks about and she looks to her hand. She sees her ring. She pulls it off. Take this back to them. Tell them that I fell. Anyone who knows me knows I would not part with this willingly. The only way to remove this from my body is from my cold, dead hand. You take it back. And she looks at it and a tear falls down her face. It's all I had left. They'll believe you. And she hands it to you, Marius. I know what happened in that room. But I can feel what's in your heart. I trust you, lad. And all is forgiven. And if you help with what needs to be done here, in this place, and you help us to cure the children and the people of Folsons, I swear to you, I know Keziah would forgive you, just like I have. We exist to aid. Aye, we'll do what you said. We found vials of this mushroom potion that you and your sisters were brewing here in this hut. Is there a, another resource of it that we might find should we need to heal more? There should be about ten doses or so here that belong to Kazai if she hadn't used any of them. And I don't think she had time to. They hadn't fully matured by the time she was taken from us. But, uh, and she looks through the the wooden piece over there. Um, if you can get that next to the cabinet, there's a there's one hidden by a runic magic. We have runes carved into the wood to hide it from sight. Uh, you can take all ten of those, and as I continue to procure more, I'll send them to to Zephyrine. There's a meeting place that we had, and a pickup location. She'll she'll know where to pick them up. It is through Zephyrine then that we might communicate with you should the need arise. Yes. She'll know how to get in contact with me. Can you see her with your stone there? Is she alright? We can't communicate in that way, unfortunately. Before we leave, make sure you tell us everything that you need us to do for you. But do you have any information about the High Inquisitor. Do you know anything about her? Does Zephyrine know anything about this woman? I have my suspicions that she might not be what she says she is. But for what I know, I know that I don't trust her just as much as I don't trust the... just as much as I don't trust the um, Archbishop. They're blinded by a faith in a god who does not reside here in this land, for if he did, we would not have spent so many years under sickness and in terror and in hope 
and begging for hope that her children would not succumb to horrible illnesses and we wouldn't lose the people in our lives that we love the most. The one true God, as they say, is not here. But I can tell you, the old way is alive and well. It's going to be up to you to figure out what her secret is, for I don't think even the Archbishop knows. Are, are, are you saying that that Foltus isn't even present? He ain't listening? He ain't with the Archbishop? I'm saying that if he is, he sure isn't answering the call. And I think that's much worse than him not being able to hear it. I, I don't really judge anyone for their religious beliefs, but I, if I may, I don't much care for this Foltus fellow. There, I said it. I said it. Oh gosh, I've been meaning to say that since <laughs> since we stepped in the sea. I don't. I just don't. I just don't care for it. I'm gonna need another full day to recover, but I can head to my house from here, and I'm happy to to make you a map if you can keep it shrouded. Make sure no one figures out where I'm where I'm resting out of the city and make sure they believe that I'm dead. And uh, we can do that. from here, I would suggest you head back to the city and do what you need to do. You've got a huge task on your hands and I'm going to need a week at least to get all of the vials ready to cure just the town of Cyril itself, let alone what we're going to do to cure the rest of Folsons. If I have the answer, I'll answer it. Is there ever a boy in your charge by the name of Dudley? Ah, oh, Skinny Dudley, no. He's not one of mine. He's far older than the orphans that we cared for. He occasionally would come and do work here and there at the orphanage, but no, he's he's under the thumb of the Inquisitor. He does few tasks for her, I believe. That's what we were afraid of. I know he's a bit besotted with her. He uh, left a few bits of parchment around with Dudley plus Inquisitor equals love. But, you know, he's he's a young lad. I think he's just overcome with hormones, as it were. Dudley Inquisitor. Dudley Inquisitor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dudley. <laughs> 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 the paper just cracked right in half. <laughs> <laughs> So with that, uh, that is uh, that is how she's responding to you. <laughs> um, you answered his last question. Uh, Lethica would ask, uh, "Tell me, Maggie, what can you say about this chief hag, the the, the, the leader of these others, the the one whose face is in the moon?" I'm not quite sure that the face that's in the moon is tied necessarily to these hags. I think it's more tied to to Mother Midnight. And her, I'm convinced, is practicing some form of witchcraft in one way or another. These hags, at least from what I've slowly coming to understand, they seem to want her favor. They want to be seen and looked upon with some kind of reverence. They seem to be working maybe for her. Or to honor her. But I, I'm not quite sure that what we see in the moon, it's far stronger than that creature that we fell beneath the, beneath the mines. And that, I'm going to be quite honest with you, Lethica, scares me far more. Because that, that hag was quite strong. As she looks down at herself, we can quite see. If we were to come face to face with the actual Mother Midnight... I don't think any of us would survive. So, so you're saying someone that we finally agree is trustworthy that M- Mother Midnight's real? Mother Midnight is definitely real. Oh no. I've been... Her beast stalks the woods. Always watching. Ever present. Oh, we've seen it. Hunting. The red-eyed monster. The red-eyed monster. It never approaches, though. It plays tricks. Have you seen the weeping lamb? Well, count yourself lucky. 
when it casts a par- its eye upon you, it will start to lure you in with more tricks. Exactly the kind of thing I'd fall for. It's just pretend, Kelsey. No. Be okay. It's just pretend, Kelsey. I, this is a game. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps no. this makes me a daggone fool. But I've been kind of half hoping this whole time that perhaps Mother Midnight was just kind of a fable and everyone just got their imagination out of control. I don't know where this power would come from then. If it's not Mother Midnight, then it's something it's something else that's creating this false image. Now I've never seen it myself. And and maybe it maybe it's just some super powerful entity that's manipulating our minds. But it sure is fooling me. Well, whatever it is, we're gonna get rid of it. But there so is something powerful at work. And whether it's an illusion that's taken on the guise of a witch. A Mother Midnight, as it were. Whatever it is, it's a powerful, horrible being that's playing with us. Like it plays with its food, waiting for the right time to pounce. And she's in full sense. Whatever it is, is in full sense. Whatever it is, I think its heart beats in Cyril. Is there anyone else we can count on? Zephyrine. I would trust her with my life. That's it. Everyone else I trusted is dead. And now I'm choosing to trust in you. And I'm hoping that my trust is not misplaced. But I'm going to be frank. I don't have much of a choice. What about in other towns? Could we get word out for help? Good luck finding anyone in the other towns who hasn't succumbed to the sickness or hasn't gone mad. The only place where people are still within their right minds is Cyril. Venture out. See it for yourself. See it with your own eyes. The horror of it. It's far more than... The words I have in my vocabulary would be able to describe to you the absolute horror of what the province, what the the rest of Folsenses has succumbed to. The few that are in their right mind have journeyed to Cyril, bringing their sick and their dead. The we rest have, we pretend don't exist. We have had a glimpse, and it is dire, as you say. Well. I think, I think we best be getting back to Cyril. What that gross old hag said in in the mines is not sitting right with me. What's that? The, 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 the last of the witches in the city is gonna gonna die or something. I forget what she said. Does anyone remember her saying that? <laughs> <laughs> I remember her saying a lot of things. I walk in the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, saying <laughs> I'm just uh, saying if 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 uh, uh, I care about her, but I can't remember. Oh, Zephyrine! I care about her. If Miss if Miss Mirabelle if Miss Mirabelle's in danger, we should h- hurry on back and not dally any longer. Yes, I agree. All right. I believe that Zephyrine is in danger as long as she's re- residing within Cyril. Oh, maybe that's all she means. I, I don't trust her brother one lick. Not at all. And I think if the opportunity arose and he, he had to choose between continuing to pull the wool over his his flock's eyes or harm and his sister, he'd choose his flock and he'd choose his power. I have no doubt. I agree with you on that. We have a lot of work to do. And it's best we begin. Do you need any help getting back to your house? I'm not going to leave here for at least a few hours. I need I need some more rest and I need a good belly full of food. So, I'm There's plenty here. Take whatever you need. There's extra rations of jerky and you can take it with you to your place. I'm going to find myself in sleep sweet embrace for a bit. <clears throat> and then I will make my way to my house. And I do feel that I'll be safe there as long as as long as you remain true to your word. just a name at the top of the witch list. <laughs> but, um, do you Boo. guys ever look into, uh, like, William Van Brunt? Is he really untrustworthy and evil? <laughs> you see as she, <clears throat> you you I, see as she, um, oh, that runs weird. her tongue around her mouth for a moment and she spits into the corner of the room. <clears throat> I will get to him. William Van Brunt is a menace right on Cerulean society. 
he'll do whatever he needs to do to to keep his gaggle of fans at his feet. Ugh. He's nothing but a narcissistic pest. <laughs> He'll lie, cheat, and steal to get what he wants. He's been a thorn in my side since the day I met that man. God. <laughs> you need some time alone. But, <laughs> but just to be but clear, no, to no be, connection to, to the To be witches. clear, I don't, I don't think he's got enough smarts in him to be of value to a higher power. He's know. simply a nuisance <laughs> and a pest. Okay. <laughs> oh god I will say however it would behoove you not to get on his bad side not because I don't think you can take him but because I think that it is one distraction you don't need at the current time and if he if, if he thinks that taking you down will award him some, some sort of victory he'll be the first person lying against your behalf if you catch what I'm saying and he'll he'll do his he is very well loved and liked by Cerulean's alike. And if if he has the chance to turn the entire city of Cyril against you, he'll do it. Yeah, we'll just file that under a list of things that we've seemed to jump the gun on. You're level five now, you can take him. You look like the kind of man that could take twenty commoners on at once. Well, provided they're in a single file line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Well, well, we hope you rest up and uh, it's Wolf's for supper. Dun 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 dun. Uh, Speaking of which, welcome, Mr. Wolfman. Welcome, oh, Mr. Wolfman. Mr. Wolfman. Mr. Wolfman. Mr. Wolfman. Welcome, welcome to the family. Welcome, Mr. Wolfman. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, Beautiful. Uh, I'll, I'll take my hat and I'll, I'll tip it. Well, it's it's been a pleasure to, to make your witchy. Co- oh, this, Brittany, this is your hat. Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> mine was between my fingers the whole time. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. I'm, I'm glad. Thank you for saving us. We'll do our best to make our wrongs right, and and and, and we'll we'll help you save the focus here. They they seem like good folk, if misguided a little. We'll do our best. Well, I appreciate it. I need to get some sleep. Um, let me quickly draw up a map for you on how to get to, to my hut should you need to find me. Like I said, keep this secret, keep it safe. Actually, I'll do it this way. And she quickly draws up a ma- map and it's clearly written out in that same runic language. Mm-hmm. And as she folds it up, she passes her, her, wooden, um, her wooden trinket to you. Mm-hmm. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. To, problem, but that's to you. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, with any luck and with a little bit of with a little bit of convincing, you could be one of us. We'd be in greatly of need of, in need of someone of your skill. I've been watching you, Farron, and you've got a lot more power than you think you do, my girl. Oh, oh. Just, you know. Also, just keep in mind, tenant number two always aid. I don't follow your tenets, but I'll take it under consideration. It's just general good advice. (laughs) And um, for what it's worth, you don't stink, Farron. You smell the sweet smell of the earth, of the Mother Earth. I get a little misty. (laughs) Me too. And I'll just nod and start heading the inside of an asshole? (laughs) Well, you do. Yorgrim, but oh, wow. Farron hides it well with the <laughs> smell of moss and... Asshole works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Bye! <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, we leave or... now, we're leaving. Yes, we're so you, you, have, you have said yeah. your goodbyes to Maggie, you uh, wash as she tucked herself back in after eating a hearty meal of a wolf, uh, a wolf meat <laughs> breakfast burrito. Um, and Ooh, she... I'm sure it was with some uh, with some home style fries. Mm-hmm. Little pico de gallo, mm-hmm. little pico de gallo, fresh pico de gallo from the garden out back. Ooh, um, and avocado. you make you begin to make your way. Through I, by the way, did eat any of that? I had more goop. Of course you did. <laughs> I know this. You only hunted the wolf for your friends. That's exactly right. And the sweet ass pelt, <laughs> which you do still have. It has dried overnight, and so it's no longer. It's the leather on the inside has started to harden, and it is functioning as a really nice. Uh, so are, you just, are you just supermaning with this wolf pelt mm-hmm. now? 
Yeah, basically. Yeah. Like a real Sichuani moment. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you you took some of the bones and uh, bleached them in the fire, and you have them hanging from your staff. And God, fucking cool. You are pretty pretty cool. <laughs> um, you've added a couple of the the sharps the sharp teeth to the necklace around uh, your neck and. Fuck you're just adding it to your collection. But with so that, you are making your way through the forests and you are familiar with this path at this point. This is the third time that you've made this trek. And you uh, go ahead and make a group uh, survival check for me to see how quickly you make your way through blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. That's good. <gasps> dead. Mine's pretty so good. am uh, I. Survival? I got a 14. Uh, survival? Mm-hmm. Oh. Same. 14. 15. Fifth. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. 22. The okay. beast consumes you. Um, 14. I'm playing my band. All right. right. Um, Lethica is still a little distracted from having died the previous day, but the rest of you, I mean. Get over it. Get over it. <laughs> Seriously. What God. a minor. It was yesterday. <laughs> Shut up, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of you are able to help where she is failing, and you're able to to make haste through the forest. And you keep your eyes and ears out for um, pigeons, centipedes, uh, weasels, as well as the beast that stalks the woods. Um, at one point, you hear what sounds to be the crying, pain, pained bleats of a baby lamb. Oh, and as you listen in that direction, it quickly fades as if it had never been. But you see nothing, though the sound lingers for a while. Gorsh, I think that there's a little wounded lamb over there. And we're not going to go towards it because we were warned against it. Oh, that's right. I mean, na- I guess uh, rules of nature, survival of the fittest and all. Well, and also the warning that we received about tricks and about how it's oh, not yes. real. Oh yes, we don't want to. We don't want lamb and all that. We we don't want to steal the meal out of the jaws of a wolf. Anyway, and you continue to make your way, and you eventually find your way spilling out of the forest proper and back onto the onto the um the dirt road that leads to Cyril itself. And it takes about four more hours of travel along the road before you finally make it towards the gates. Oh gosh, remember four hours ago when we were, t- we were talking about stealing a meal out of the jaws of the wolf? I should have said this back then, but I just thought of this. We made a meal out of the jaw of a wolf. I just wanted everyone to know. I'll take that. the head of my pal and go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, I didn't know you were a puppeteer. That was not one of my specialties. Can you teach me? No, don't get used to it. Oh. oh. <laughs> but it was a pretty good time. Well, if I'm not used to it, that means it'll be a treat and a surprise every time. <laughs> sure it will. That's a spirit. Now, what did she, she put, gave us that map? Mm-hmm. She did. And that's, that's just to show you how to get to her hut from Cyril. Mm. Presumably before we got right to the gates of the city. Where do we want to hide this to keep it safe? Put it in the hellish hell bag. That's a pretty good idea. Can I give this to you? I would recommend that we keep the runic lens also a secret. I'm happy to take the map, but do we think that we'll need it quickly if we need it again or, or... And I would say she called it her witch's eye. So, you know it to be a witch's eye. Lethica, oh. Lethica where is there, where's the uh, you are here on the map? <laughs> it's, it's here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. Does it move as we move? Because that would be awesome. <laughs> it's just like the Marauders it's map. The Marauders. So you Hell see yeah. the little feet yeah. with you on there just walking around. And you, you see that pacing inside the She's cathedral is uh, Archbishop Danton, Danton Renault. Oh, damn. Yeah. I'll fold up the That uh, doesn't the happen. It's not the Marauders map. Uh, oh, but don't you hold on to that. <laughs> and I'll tie this onto my person. With all the bones and shit that I carry around, no one will notice. It's true. It's true. No one will. <laughs> Is that you easily tie it to your staff and it's yeah, like, got, like trinkling there and next to fetishes and bones and all kinds of shit. Literal shit. I just anything yeah, I just, find. Just yeah, there's a there's a there's a hardened yeah. cow patty just swinging. 
If we think we are going to be searched or uh, captured, remind me to tear up this map. Bag. The, the arm reaches out and grabs the map and pulls it down with him. It's like those hands in Super Mario 3 that grab you in the fucking last world. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know it! I and, get that reference. And it is at this point that you are facing the gates to the city. Marius, are you going to take care of the politics of it? Talking to the Inquisitor. Yes. Uh... My suggestion was going to be we find a way to meet with Zephyrine in a, in a secure place where we can explain everything and, and talk to her, but I assume that the High Inquisitor will send for me, and if she doesn't, then I'll have to arrange an, a meeting or something. Uh, it's I, been about three days, by the way, since you left. My plan... I think that checks. ...was to tell the High Inquisitor that Maggie was already dead in the mines. And that I brought the ring back as proof. All right. She and told us to go in and out of that side entrance though, right? Is that the gate that we're in? Was the gate yeah. we left out of? Yes. Okay. I would propose- Because she you. didn't want you to be seen by like the guard. A half a mile away. Like, mm -hmm. We're like, we, we're yeah, seeing like- It's, it's not the like bed. the yeah. gate is right here and you're leaning up against it, just like, hey. Please hey, no one hey, listen hey, to what we're saying. How do we lie to us? Like in Monty Python and the Holy Grail with the Frenchman, or like just- And your father smelled of elderberries. Um. Oui, oui. <laughs> That's the best I would I propose you go a step farther. Rather than finding her in mine, that we fought, that we killed Maggie, they already believe we brought. I keep wanting to say Zendaya. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that we brought Kazaya to them. And as as you look up, you see a man in a red and black suit. It's skin tight, this strange plasticky material. As he's crouched down on the city, and you see as he reaches out, and this strange white magic shoots out of his wrists as he swings from parapet to parapet. Wow, Hugo lost a lot of weight. <laughs> I think he stole some guy's pizza. <laughs> it's it's pizza time. Hugo Pizza's discovered Italian, IMF. not French. <laughs> you know, after eight ma major images with that guy, you think they'd be done? All right, you know, I, I think that's a that's a fantastic plan. I mean, we we fought through. Maggie to get to the hag. Do we mention the hag at all? Or oh. did we just say that it was... We're talking about this ahead of time. That, do we just say <laughs> that it was Maggie and that we defeated her alone and that it is done and the evil has been vanquished? Is it not a gamble? We don't know the High Inquisitor's allegiances yet. She sent us to the mine. That's exactly right. We, did, we never told her about the weasel hag, did we? So for the suddenly there's a hag and and she's expecting Macduff. Damn. We should keep it consistent with what her expectations are. You were the one who spoke with her last. Oh, it's been months. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me in exact detail what she said. Um, so out of character, I don't think we told her anything. You didn't. No. So it, I would say it was very clear to you that she was. Att she was trying to get you to give up information, and yeah, you well, didn't. I got the chance. Um, so what she around. ended up doing was just asking you to bring her back any that. Uh, anything that seemed oh, yeah, uh, pertinent or important. Down to your yeah, side. well, I got some Maggie McDuff <laughs> liver crystallized. My, my recollection is that all of like the evil that we alluded to in the crooked house was due to the lady, mm -hmm. Lady Lockwood. Yeah. And not like there was a horrible weasel hag in the attic and there's a horrible No, FG. I don't think you told anybody that you saw those things. Ah, yeah. Okay. Except for Philip. All right, Except we're all for Philip. You're right. That's this is the this is the way to go, for sure. We believe in you. You will do fine. Well, I I can certainly handle myself in worst case scenario. I'll never see any of you again. So he's a thing. Why are you laughing, Marys? <laughs> Nothing. No, please. Continue. All right. But here's the thing. What if we're like, oh, yeah, we just killed Maggie McDuff. Here's her ring. And then she sends somebody to the mine, and they find a corpse with this gigantic bloated hag. But maybe we can say, oh, that was Maggie McDuff. 
Yeah, but then she'd be like, well, why didn't you mention that she was a disgusting anus hag? So what I will say is it was decaying and deteriorating so quickly that you imagine probably even by now, now, it's probably just returned to oh, the good that's, yeah. that's exactly what there, I was There are no that's remains of that. that ha- th- that's the reason you couldn't bring back a part of the hag mm-hmm. to show that you had. Uh, I think we'll be fine. It was like an N64 bag. The guy. entire bottom the of the gone. entire bottom of your satchel is covered in like disgusting rotting goop, and it's actually dripping that's onto the ground. Well, there's that's your proof, foul. right there. I think we'll be fine. No one's going to go check this out, and even if, even if the High Inquisitor herself visits that mine, I think we have our bases covered. Just All tell right. her about the the night, Knights Templar. Yeah, they're Knights Templar. Guard. Hmm? I'm sure she will ask what they're happened the to the rest of the guard, and I will tell her in excruciating detail. Well, good luck. That is not me, is all I'm going to say. And we'll talk to Zephyrine first, and if she has any uh, other insight, then that'll make your case even more informed. Agreed. All right. Are we ready? Let's get back in there. Let's get back to Cyril. We're on the road to Cyril. Aboard the Virgil Express. And you make your way towards the side entrance to Cyril that you had um, switched the music to Cyril. Oh, the Ghost Light Express. Gosh, that was a really I big was opportunity. Yeah, yeah, but no, he's not even here. I miss my old friend. The frog. Uh, you make your way back towards Cyril and you, um, you make your way into the gates. And it is far louder than you remember it being. It's busier and uh, you hear shouts and screams as you quickly hop to and make your way to the streets and you see horrors unfold in front of you. Mass hysteria, mass panic. You see people strung up and hung on lamp posts. You see bodies strewn throughout the streets. You hear people screaming and yelling at each other. Door. You see people who are boarding up their houses and locking themselves inside for fear that they too will be um, accused of being a witch. And it is everywhere, all over, as strange masked, um, masked guards who clearly uh, carry the sigils and the iconography of Foltis march throughout the streets, dragging people towards the jail. Um, you see people running out and and shoving friends and family members in front of them, claiming this is a witch, he is a witch, they are a witch. And off towards the distance, you see William Von, Van Brunt as standing next to, no, he is standing next to a makeshift gallows. And you see as he is standing between two clearly deceased people who have been hung on these gallows, as he flexes his muscles in between them, as one of his lackeys paints the image of him having captured these witches. And you see a group rallied around him cheering um, Billy caught the witches, Billy the witch slayer, Billy the witch's bane. And everybody is so proud and honored to be in his presence as they memorialize this moment. And you even, as you're passing by, you the throng of people around him are too many for you to get close, though you want to. Um, you would not be safe to attempt to accost him at this moment. But you hear someone say, uh, how excited they are that Billy is going to be hanging this painting up in his um, in his living space. That it will go above the mantel, above the uh, hearth, above the mantelpiece in his home, to commemorate the day that that Billy um, that Billy slew the witches. Uh, your <laughs> I was uh, was preparing to make a long and passionate speech about forgiveness and thinking about how you've been thinking a lot about this Van Brunt fellow and perhaps maybe you need to let things go. But now I realize this man must face justice. That's no man. It's a monster. Or warm. A, a, a monster like scary. Just call him like a worm or a gross bug. I feel like he's a monster. You you hear him call out, Jonathan. 
try to try to get them in motion, and he pushes the body so that they swing a little bit as he flexes. Uh, How about that? I can my lantern shoot spectral uh, <laughs> spectral arms of uh, death. Your yeah. order, my appreciate. I appreciated the poetry with which you were trying to uh, you know, create the, the the parallel between calling the monster hunter a monster. It wasn't lost on me. And. <laughs> All the while that this is happening, there are there's still the screaming and the crying and the panicked sounds, the sounds of people boarding up their homes, the, the sounds of people being dragged from their houses, screaming and crying, I'm not a witch, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. Um, all the while, the bells of the cathedral are tolling. What the fuck happened? How long were we gone? About three days. <laughs> three days? Oh, jeez, did something else happen? And that orphanage got burned. Is there another orphanage we didn't know about? I need you all to roll a uh, perception check. Why do you do that? Thank you, Hanska. Thank you, Hanska. Oh, thank you, Hanska. Thank you. You got a sub from him. Uh, show some thanks. That's amazing. Thank show you. I got a 17. I got a 20. 15. 11. I'm That's... blinded by rage. Okay. Uh, you only got eyes for Billy right now. Uh, Farron and Marius, you are Marius. You're you're attempting to um, to calm down Yorgrim, who's nearly in a complete fit over the scene that he's seeing. The absolute um, disgusting scene that uh, William Van Brunt <laughs> is putting yeah, on here. Um, the desecration of these bodies as they're put on display as if they were never people to begin with just sick human trophies for this man's pleasure. As you as you try to quell his rage, uh, Farron hears a noise just faintly under the, the cacophony of voices around and you, you see out of the corner of your, of your eye as she turns to look and creeping down an alleyway, you see a shadowy figure, a scrawny young boy as Skinny Dudley darts out of an alleyway and rushes towards you. And he, the rest of you don't notice as he slides behind you, Marius, and within within earshot of you, uh, Farron, and you hear him say, uh, uh, Mr. Marius, uh, I, I may have done an oopsie. What is it now, Dudley? And as he says this, the rest of you are alerted to Dudley's presence. Um, c- can we go back in that little alleyway there where we have a little bit of privacy, please? If you promise to answer one of my questions when we're done. Yep, sure will, Mr. Marius. But uh, I think you should let me get out what I need to say first, if you don't mind. I sure. don't think we need to go back in an alley. No, Look I think we- around here. You yeah, no, touch I... your mouth, boy. I can handle this if you'd like. Fine. You gonna come with me, sir? I'll just be but a moment. Yes, he's please, little, lead the way. The little fellow. And he's a he little will... pain in the ass is what he is. Yeah, it's all my fault. And you're gonna be real mad when I'm done following me. Probably. And he's gonna lead you I'll, into- yeah, I'll follow. Um, <laughs> and he, he shrinks down beside a stack of like wooden crates and kind of tries to hide himself in the shadows. Um, you know, I I don't know if you know this, but I was right mad at you for having your, your visit with the High Inquisitor because I, I fancied myself in love with her. And I, I have to say that outright first, sir, because it is it explains why I did what I did. You Go understand? On. And I mean, you had a meeting with her, so you know how charming and irresistible she can be, right? And Go you see as he's like on. sniveling and he looks very, very, um, he looks very, very upset. What did you do, Dudley? I, I, she told me that I was doing, I was doing good by her, that I was helping, you know, and, and even though it was witchcraft, that it was the good kind of witchcraft. You know what I mean? Anyway, she, she had me and he reaches towards his bucket, the bucket he always carries. And you see as it's empty, you no, know, the wood is a little stained with the, the dirty mop water that was in it and the different things that he would carry around in it. He notches his finger in a small little crevice and removes um, a secret bottom. And sitting in the very small part of it, or in the, um, in the secret part of it, are four witch balls. 
She told me if I, you know, if I just put these where she said that they would keep people safe and, and, and they weren't and the people who they were left, the beds they were left under were, were starting to, you know, come up dead or be accused of witchcraft. And, and when I told her about my fears, uh, especially, you know, after what happened at the Mirabelle house this morning, <clears throat> and all of a sudden you watch as he begins to turn purple and he begins to choke and you see as his eyes start rolling back in, in, his, in his face and he starts shaking and he's trying to get words out and he can't as out of his throat erupts a pigeon. Oh, just the head at first as it turns and looks towards you and he looks down and he starts shaking and crying and he's trying to get words out but out of his windpipe, this pigeon's head has shot forward and he cannot form words anymore. And as the pigeon's head turns all the way around and looks at him, his entire head explodes where he stands. Dodgley! And feathers fly this way and that as the rest of his body slinks to the ground. And you see out of the hole where his head had been, one, two, three, four, five pigeons fly up into the air as they flap and look at you almost in unison as their heads turn this way and that. And though they are pigeon heads, there's no human head on them, there are no human hands. They look at you as if they almost have ascensions. And though they have a beak and they cannot do it, they look as if they're smiling as they all fly up into the air and scatter throughout the city. No, 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 no. I'm gonna like cradle his body and like pick him up and inspect him. No, 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 no. What? Do we in the night? Do we house. see this? If you were watching down the alleyway, you you would see that that Dudley really? collapsed, and you'd hear Marius. But I, I would say you're not pigeon. close enough to oh, see no. that his head exploded and all of that. I hearing Marius cry out, I'd, I'd run. Yeah, towards I him guess. Yeah. Him. I would say that would easily be enough to distract you distract you from no. William Van. Yeah. Yeah. You guys rush in. I will be staying at the mouth of the alley and just making sure. That Are there following. bits of like brain and yes. blood and bone Everywhere. and shit? So as soon as as soon as I I, I have him in my arms and. As soon as I realize that my hands and arms and chest are coated in his blood, I, I drop the body and I take several steps back. And I, I would say I need you to make a hands. constitution saving throw at disadvantage. I'm trying to wipe it off as, as quickly as I can. The DC, the, is, the DC is pretty low, but I still want you to make it. Con, con a disadvantage? Yeah. Okay, not bad. It's gonna be a nine plus. Okay, it, well, the DC was ten. Oh, I got an eleven. Okay, so you you, you are able to steal yourself so that you don't, you're not um, consumed by hunger that you want to. Are you all right? No. What happened? Who did this? What did this? Marius, he was just a little boy. What 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 did he do? Is it a lover's quarrel? Did you just insinuate that Marius is lovers with a little boy? No, no I think he's insinuating that I murdered oh. Dudley for sleeping with the so high Marius blew up his brain. <laughs> yeah, with my mind. Yeah. Oh my god, Kelsey. Kelsey. For Kelsey. writing Kelsey. Mr. Kelsey. Dudley Inquisitor in a book. <laughs> She's mine! I, I determined in that moment. Go to the shame corner. Go to the shame corner, Kelsey. Yeah. I'll see myself. Marius just pierced the nails in. It's, went, you know, oh. it's, it's really hard to just be a serious. Exactly. <laughs> I heard that you like the High Inquisitor, Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> I will be uh, frantically trying to wipe the blood off of myself futilely. I, he he was he began to tell me something about the th a pigeon came out of his throat and his head. More pigeons. It was as if he couldn't. As soon as he began to tell me something, he he died instantly. What the pigeons erupted from his. He was he was tasked by the High Inquisitor to hide the witch balls in in people's homes under their beds, framing people. And and as he began to tell me more about it, he, he, he believed that what the High Inquisitor would have it, was having him do was for the good of, of, of the city. And, and clearly, they were setting these people up to, 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 to claim that they were witches. But, but whatever curse he had on him prevented him from speaking. What was he going to say? What was he saying when, 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 he, when his, his person exploded? 
was that the, the last the thing that he <laughs> said was after what happened oh, this at morning the at the house Mirabelle's house. That's what, that's what was. And right. that's when. I was completely shocked. And even Mary's <laughs> probably didn't hear it. Sure, surely uttering these words in this moment will mean that your head will explode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he, he said something had happened this morning at the Mirabelle's house. We might be too late. We, we need to go now. We have to hurry. We can't waste a single second. Oh, by the thunder, please. Oh, clean my hands. Oh, I'm going to, like, search through my uh, my pack for water and, and try sure. to clean, like, Well, so you're easily water. able to clean yourself off enough. There's still bits remaining as it was quite the explosion. This, this, um, but this you're, is by far the most shaken you've seen me as I'm covered in, in this child's blood. But you're at least, you're able to make yourself presentable enough that anyone seeing you on the street wouldn't immediately notice All that right, you're covered in someone's... We gotta go, we gotta go now. Okay, I pick you up yes. by, by your cloak. All right, all right, all right I'm, I'm with you. Do we have a bit of cloth? Can't just leave him here. He yeah, we can. We can't. He's he framing people. I kick his body. <laughs> what? Oh, I cringe. I, I like cringe and, and bite my, my tongue. Fuck this kid. Let's go. <laughs> he, he's, he's right. We're doing I'm, the time. I, 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 I see your point. I see Briggs's point. I'm a very confused and conflicted scarecrow right now. I'm just going to follow y'all. There are bodies littering the streets. I There's nothing we can do. I don't share the sentiment, but we've got to go. <laughs> I would say it wouldn't seem wholly out of place with some of the horrible things that you've seen since re-entering Cyril. His his body is not the only one littering the streets. Well, it's the only one with his head fucking exploded by pigeons. <laughs> we don't know in that. In a dark alley. <laughs> we don't know that. Everyone else just hanging from a freaking hanging post. <laughs> I, I will Your lean. Is Does this you campaign know. make you emotional, <laughs> Mace? <Mace's? laughs> I'll steady myself on Briggsy as we begin to rush nice towards guy. the mirror bell. It's zone. gonna be okay, Mary. It's gonna be okay. And I'm, I'm at the mouth of the alley, and I'm just like giving them the hand, and just like they catch me up on the way. I don't know what happened, but help, help me understand what. <laughs> and it is, and it is, it is with some hesitation, but you are able to convince uh, Yorgrim to follow along with you as you rush through the streets of Cyril. Um, you are able to catch Lethica up on the way as you dart down a dark alley off, after dark alley, trying to stay from the main, stay away from the main thoroughfare of the city. And though you don't know this city that well, you've been through it enough that even though you take a couple of wrong turns here or there, you are able to eventually find your way to the. Mirabelle's house. Um, and it takes about, I don't know. Um, oh, um, Dudley's head who, who has the witch balls? You, you grab the witch balls, the... right? Dude, I'm a mess. I'm we, we, we a mess. can talk about it later. I, I wouldn't um, even thought to. You, you do eventually find yourselves at the Mirabelle's house. And you, the scene that you are met with is one that you were not wholly expecting, though it was one that you had feared. The front door of the house has been clearly smashed in by an incredibly large fist. There's only one person in this city that you've met that could make this kind of destruction in the house. As it barely hangs on to its one hinge, you see that there are bits of food and other things that have been sh that have spilled out of the front of the house. And it is completely quiet, almost eerily quiet. And you slowly make your way into the front door and you are met with a scene of horror. The kitchen has been completely destroyed. There's blood everywhere. And lying in the very center is Francois Mirabel, clearly dead, his face completely smashed in by an incredibly large fist. Laying limply in his hand is a small kitchen knife, which he clearly used to try and protect himself and his family. No life remains in his eyes. And behind him, shaking and silent, with fear in her eyes, is Colette Mirabelle, covered in her father's blood as she rocks back and forth and cries and stares at you. She says no words as she shakes and stares blankly out of the door at all of you. You can tell that she jumped a little as your presence entered as your shadows entered the door for fear that it was more horror and more trauma. And as she recognizes all of you, she does not smile, she does not say a word. She just continues to shake as she holds her teddy bear in her hands and rocks back and forth. You watch and you stare and it's quiet, eerily, eerily quiet, as the silence is broken by the sound of a strange calling. As all of you turn and look, 
and perched on the door that's partially removed from the frame is an incredibly large pigeon with the face of a human and human hands where talons should be. As it smiles at you with its human face, it alights into the air and flies over the city. And that is where we'll end the session. Holy fucking shit! Poor Francois! Gotta give it up. Oh my god! I'm so upset. I'm so upset. Thank you, Gamer Jason. <laughs> and LL Mika for the follow. Thank you, guys. Nikki. Sorry. We're not done. Somebody else talk about it. <laughs> Somebody else talk about it. What we're going to do next is move into Evangelist and Chill, um, which is generally a subscriber only perk, but due to Twitch being. For a limited a, time, it's available to everybody. A lovely company. They're being a little twitchy. So many great things. <laughs> and I would say, even though I didn't describe it, it's very clear that uh, that Zephyrine is not present in the house. Yeah, we I, figured. I, that would be yeah, weird. I figured you would figure, but I feel like I should say it. She's clearly been taken by Hugo. Hugo clearly Hugo. killed. I couldn't remember his name. Uh, yes, Francois. Uh, I wanted to call him Igor. If that's not right. <laughs> I'm going to call him Weigor. That's not right. Uh, so anyway, don't go anywhere. Um, yeah. We're going to chat about the session, talk about our favorite moments. We're going to answer all of your questions and comments. Uh, decompress and, from that yeah, mindfuck. We're going to decompress for a little bit after a, I think, a seven or eight week break from mm -hmm. Edge of Midnight. So um, stay tuned. And if, you, uh, if you're going to head out for the night, we're going to be back this Friday. Yeah, with yeah. A, Double days. Uh, three <laughs> short days. Three short days with our monthly session of Icebound, DM by Derek. Ooh. It's a hardcore survival campaign hardcore. where we'll probably just freeze to death. Or mm -hmm. perhaps die way. of yeah. die of uh, die of hunger. We'll show up for about Odds 20 minutes. Anybody's then, head exploding uh, with pigeons? Uh, Always a chance. Derek, what do you think? Always a chance. Um, Number. <laughs> Bag on. Uh, there is a 100% chance. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's That's really so I, roll, I rolled, I rolled a, a 10. I just decided uh, to multiply it by uh, 10. Yeah. Like <laughs> um, I'll roll it. And we'll be back uh, weekly with this campaign. Pretty good, so, yeah. uh, we and a Friday a with a different one. Uh, what's that? And Friday with a different one. Friday with a different one. But uh, yeah, so we're, we're back weekly on Tuesdays with Edge of Midnight. Uh, good to get back into the swing of things. Oh. So, if they'll um, continue to play at my table, that's for sure. A nightmare. If, we hope you join us for Avengers. <laughs> now you've chanted me with a coven. So. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. 